This is a presentation of Fox Sports. Like Lambeau Field and Fenway Park, Darlington Raceway is a shrine to the sport. It began here in the 1950s, 75 cars battling for more than six hours. Today, the tradition continues. You don't just watch a race at Darlington, you experience it. The experience begins now on the one and only NASCAR on Fox. You know what? On this St. Patrick's Day, we offer this Irish prayer. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. the Irish today on Fox. Happy St. Patrick's Day. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing is next on Fox. Welcome to the Singular Pre-Race Show, brought to you by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. And the best drivers in the world are here and moments away from the ultimate test on a track that's been labeled too tough to tame. We're getting closer to the start of the Carolina Dodge Dealers 400 from Darlington, South Carolina. Our location trackside as the Hollywood Hotel is once again open for business. Hi, I'm Chris Myers and a happy St. Patrick's Day to all as we welcome you to the singular pre-race show. It rained a little this morning, but under threatening skies, ready to race and it looks to be clear. Darlington, a special place because because along with the history and tradition, you get to see the drivers race the track more than the competition. As for the competition today, we'll see if Tony Stewart can win his second in a row. And we'll find out if Steve Park can successfully return to the track that knocked him out of action for six months. And can NASCAR's poster boy, Jeff Gordon, snap out of his driving slump? Gordon has gone 12 consecutive races without a top five finish. Now, let's go trackside to our Steve Byrne. Steve? Chris, this may be the place where Jeff Gordon breaks that streak because he's won five races here Friday. He just missed his fourth career pole here by three one-thousandths of a second. He's led nearly a thousand laps. On an unfortunate personal note, on Friday, his wife, Brooke, filed for divorce after seven years of marriage. To Matt Yoakum. Steve, for the second time in his Winston Cup career, Steve Park returns after a 16-race layoff. Back at Darlington, Steve, you finished second here last year. Can you describe the emotions and how excited you are to be back? I'm just excited. I mean, Penzoil has really given me the opportunity to come back on my own terms, and uh, I think it paid off in qualifying. What's your biggest concern today? Uh, just getting on this podium for driver introduction, but uh, mainly my big concern is just getting through the whole race. I mean, when they throw the checker flag, I want to feel as good as I do now. On Friday, after the completion of his first lap of practice, flagman Jimmy Howe actually dropped the checker flag to welcome him back. And he's hoping today that Park is hoping that he's the first guy to see that checkered flag today. Get up on the driver intros, buddy. And now to Speedway Illustrated's Dick Berger. And Dick? Thanks, Matty. Ricky Craven is having one of the best times of his entire professional career. In four races so far this year, he's got a pair of fifth-place finishes. And today he will start on the pole for the second time in this young season. But this is a tough old racetrack. How do you tame Darlington? It's a tough old place. It's a little mean. You got to get mean right back. But you know, it's such a fine line between being aggressive and going across the line and having to uh, load the, the car with a hook. Team's doing a great, great job. You know, anytime you get these kind of results, it's the product of a great effort. And uh, I'm just proud to drive the tide forward. All right. Good luck to you. Hey, they're calling you on the stage for driver intro. She can't miss that or he'd start all the way in the back. To Chris. All right, thank you very much, Dick. Our guys are too tough to tame. You know him, Daryl Waltrip, <laughs> Jeff Hammond in the uh, Hollywood Hotel at a happy St. Patty's Day. Hey, yep. DW, how about it? You've had success on this track. Is Steve Park, is this the wrong kind of track for him to make a comeback on? Well, think about it. He, he had a great run here last year in this particular race, finished second to Dale Jarrett. I thought he was going to win. He led the most laps. So that's, in his mind, he thinks this is a great place to come back. Then that's the pro. Think about the con. If he doesn't do well here, 
Blame it on the track. Blame <laughs> it on the lady, lady in black. black. Always have an excuse. Hey, well, there's always a buzzword around the garage. What's yeah. the buzzword here today? Today, Chris, it's got to be adapt and improvise. This racetrack's ever-changing, so you got to be on top of your game if you want to beat the lady in black. All right, and uh, as we said, just in case any of the MTV Generation drivers feel that racing at Darlington is a breeze, we drafted someone to take them through boot camp and explain that sooner or later you have to earn your stripes here. Now, Bill Murray in the movie Stripes has nothing on RDW. Ten hut, stand up straight. Turn that hat around. Don't smile at me like that. I'll slap that smile off your face. You young guns think you know your way around a racetrack? Well, let me tell you something, boys. I got some bad news for you. For the next three hours, your hiney belongs to the lady in black. Now this is racing boot camp. <laughs> you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. This place is tough on your combat boots. She'll chew up your tires and spit them out. Now get down and give me 50. You'll be lucky to get 50 laps out of a set of eagles here. Don't eyeball me, son. You gotta earn your Darlington stripe. This wall can be your ally. You misuse it, becomes your enemy. This is the no zone at Darlington, right there. Boy, that's what that wall does to you. Now listen up. Here's my battle plan. If you want to drive in here low and let her skate up the hill, miss you, Mark, the battle's over. And it just throws you up against the wall. Got some bad news for you, boys. Privates don't do so well here. You need spirits. Veterans like General Petty and, and Earnhardt and Colonel Jarborough and Pearson, code name the Silver Fox. And lately, that young Lieutenant Gordon, he's had success here. And let me tell you, I've earned my stripes here. Five, five successful campaigns on this battlefield. So listen up. At Darlington, you don't race each other. You race the track. And that's a fact, Jack. <laughs> All right, well, you look like Corporal Clinger a little bit in that outfit. I, I kid, but you certainly had. Are we, uh, are we at ease or dismissed? Yeah, Whatever. Yeah, at ease, we at should, ease, boys, at uh, ease. Uh, straighten us out here. Now, hey, fall in line behind me. Now, if, if, I was in the, if I was in your troop, I'd be going AWOL. But at this track, we've heard of guys hitting the wall, but what about the history of going over the wall? Well, I tell you, in 1965, I was sitting in my living room in uh, Owensboro, Kentucky, watching this race, and all of a sudden, one of my heroes, K.O. Yarborough, Went down in the first turn, and the next thing I know, he was in my living room. <laughs> was he, he all right? He, he was okay. Oh, he was okay. He went over the wall. You know what they did to fix that problem? They just made the walls taller. <laughs> so I'm gathering by his uh, military example here that, right, you have, to be, you have to be disciplined but have patience at this track. You've got to have, Chris. If you don't, this place will eat you up. And Daryl can attest to that. We've been here many, many times. You do not beat this place. You just try to get along with her. All right, let's call in Larry McReynolds, a former crew chief from the broadcast booth. What were your marching orders, uh, Larry, for your drivers when they came here? I don't know if I want to go to that boot camp, <laughs> but you can never relax. If you're out there even leading the race and everything feels good, if you just try to relax for a second, that wall will reach out and just grab you. All right, and we'll get your prediction on the race, as uh, all of our experts uh, will give their thoughts. Uh, one of uh, four drivers uh, for the first time in this oh, race wow, at Darlington like is, uh, <laughs> is Ryan Newman, one of NASCAR's brightest young stars. He's driven like a veteran this year. 24-year-old Ryan Newman currently second in points, but he earned his stripes here at Darlington. Saturday's happy hour. This is the last few minutes. Unhappy for Newman as Penske Ford as he met the lady in black up close and personal, and she left her mark. So as a result, he moves from starting third all the way to the back of the field. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. And Chris, the fast 24-year-old. You've been fast every time you've come here in the Bush car and Winston Cup car. Now you've got to be fast at the back. Mentally, how challenging is it now to, to start at the back? Well, it's going to be tough. I mean, start of a race, the guys that are up front are going to want to take off, but they're going to want to be easy on their tires. And when you're in the back, you're going to be easy on your tires because you've got guys in front of you that hopefully you're faster than. And you want to get by them, so you got to use up your tires a little bit. And it's, you know, it's, it's mentally challenging as much as it is physically, physically challenging here, just trying to keep the race car off the wall. But uh, it's just a really fun racetrack. It's a driver's racetrack, and that's what I like about it. Do you have a mental restrict plate for today? Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just you think about when you need to go fast and when you need, when you need to go slow. And more often than not, you go slow, you go faster. And, and you just got to keep that in your mind, and, and uh, hopefully that'll keep that all tail forward up front. He's looking for his first career win, Steve Burns, and he enters Darlington second in points.
Well, Matt, one guy who's always fast here at Darlington is Jeff Burton. He's got two wins. That's impressive, but perhaps more impressive is the fact that in eight of the last ten races, Jeff Burton has finished in the top five. Today, he starts 14th. Chris Myers. Jeff Burton trying to accomplish the uh, double, winning the Bush race on the Winston Cup race. Mark Martin, the last one to do that in 1993. Time now for our singular, you make the call. Look at the standings. Look at Jeff Hammond smiling because he's ahead of the pack, pulling uh, away from Larry that. Mack and DW. In Disgusting. Our point standing so far. So let's uh, go to this week. And Larry, we'll start with you. Who do you like and why? Well, I'm not only going with the man that won the Bush race yesterday. He led every lap. Mr. Darlington, 99, Jeff Burton. All right, DW, how about you? Two, four, two, four. <laughs> Up on the front row, he's the man. Do you think he'll snap out of it? I think he's going to snap out of it today. <laughs> All right. no, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> he may be starting in the back. But he he's is. leading ahead of the points he's right now. In Sterling the Marlin is going to come through and keep me up on top of the group. He'll never make it. He'll make it. All right, you guys, these are, this is a, this is a tough army here. It's going to be a war yet, I'm telling you. <laughs> Darlington's in trouble if we're, if we're defending. By the way, end of the season, Singular will donate $25,000 to the charity, uh, to the charity of choice for the winner of our contest. And DW, we're going to, we're going to dismiss a dishonorable discharge. You have to go up to the broadcast booth, sir, and uh, work, uh, straight those guys out up there, okay? Mike Joy and Larry Mack. Carry on, man. Okay, carry make, on. Make sure Smitty and your cart doesn't beat the strike, all right? <laughs> Buckle your seat that wall. All right, hang on. Have fun on the broadcast. Uh, we'll continue here at the Hollywood hotel with Jeff Hammond and myself is Jeff Gordon greeting the crowd and hoping to bounce out of it. He's DW's pick. We'll be back at Darlington in a moment. Live in Darlington, South Carolina, thousands and thousands of people coming from all over the southeast to catch a little bit of history. Wonder if that youngster is going to go for two tires or four tires when he has his pit stop. Welcome back to the Hollywood Hotel on the singular pre-race show, the Winston Cup Drivers Championship points race heading into today the fifth of 36 races. And let's check the standings as Sterling Marlin, leading a mixture of young drivers and savvy veterans. He's the only driver to finish in the top ten in all four races this year. However, the Sterling zone continues as he has to start at the back of the pack. And let's check in again, going trackside in our Steve Burns. Steve? You know, Chris, Sterling Marlin has never won a Winston Cup championship, but he has been our points leader the last three races. As you said, the bad news is he has to start from the rear of the field because they had to change motors. We asked Sterling what went wrong. He said, uh, I don't know, you know. She just sort of seized up on us. Uh, good news is it's the same car we had in Vegas. Just have to wait and see, mate. Well, Steve Dale Jarrett returns to the track most rich in NASCAR history in a place where he's won three of the last five spring events. Last year, he won this event and took over the points lead. He's hoping to jumpstart his season today. You know, he will have a great pit stall in the back here as we're coming to a stop. But they're hoping for a good run today, especially with the cloud cover, because they were hoping for clouds, and that's what they got today, Dick. 26-year-old El Cajon, California rookie Jimmy Johnson, car 48, has dazzled the veterans. Daytona 500, the pole, Las Vegas, finished sixth. Atlanta, finished third. He starts fifth today. As fast as Johnson is, he knows this place is hard on youngsters. Chris Myers. All right, thanks, Dick. Speaking of the Daytona 500, the winner there, Ward Burton, two of his four career wins here at Darlington. Last year, from the 37th spot in September, he captured the checkered flag here. And hope you've enjoyed the singular pre-race show as we get closer to the start. Which driver will have a winning expression at the end of the day? Stay here on Fox all day to find out. All right, Jeff Hammond, with the weather, how does that affect which drivers or which teams might have an advantage? Well, I tell you right now, I talked to Frankie Stoddard, who's crew chief for Jeff Burton, and they like this kind of weather. If you remember, he's won here at Darlington rain short and races, as well as, I like my pick for the day, Sterling Marlin. Those guys kind of like rain short and weather also so these guys understand how to work the weather and race the racetrack you've got to get to halfway and be first as the drivers uh, get ready you see jeff burton who won here yesterday led from start to finish and there's a uh, sterling marlin the points leaders the surface here jeff you talked all weekend about how abrasive this is so the tires come into play and those pit crews are going to be on the spot they really are but you've got to get on and off pit road because you're going to have to get four tires every time the caution flies and uh, you mentioned that certainly Ward Burton is someone who has had success here. Bobby Labonte is a guy who has uh, used his pit position to rally. He knows how to get on off this pit road and come off from the back of the pack also. So Dale Jarrett's not in a bad position being at the end of pit road like a lot of people might think. All right, we got a lot of race uh, to watch here. The weather will cooperate, and you stay with us as well from the uh, Hollywood Hotel. Thanks for watching us here as uh, 
Jeff Burton is getting ready to go, and we're getting closer to the green flag. Green, the color of choice on St. Patrick's Day. Time for leprechauns and lucky charms, and I don't mean the cereal. And it doesn't have to be St. Patrick's Day for a driver to be superstitious and to latch on to something for good luck. Tony Stewart takes on the lady in black today. But last week in Atlanta, Lady Luck was riding along in the back of his car. Tony Stewart scores his first super speedway win in over a year. You know, it's a team effort. I, I'm just a lucky the guy that gets to ride these things on Sunday. We got our good luck char charm Bob Nardelli with us today. So. She fared fairly well, I think. Uh, everybody was happy with her performance, and uh, now she has her own agent, and now she's she's booking autograph sessions and media appearances and this and that all over the place. So uh, she's almost we are, we're having to pay her to come back on Sunday now. So it's it's going to be a pretty big ordeal. Tonight, the Carolina, the birthplace of super speedway stock car racing. When built in 1950, one of the few paved oval tracks in the nation. Drivers have challenged this foreboding and forbidding oval for more than half a century. This track's six years older than Kenny Schrader, the senior driver in today's field. They race down on the apron, up on the banking, and all the way around. The first winner here, Johnny Mance, averaged 76 miles an hour. Fans sat in the shade under that covered grandstand. That was a luxury, too, in those days. But today, no longer a luxury. Today, it's an all-out battle on NASCAR's most venerable racetrack, the Carolina Dodge Dealers 400. Under cloudy, cool skies, we're set to go racing. Let's go trackside for today's opening ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, today's flyby will be presented by the United States Navy Strike Fighter Squadron 203. They will be coming from the east at the end of the national anthem. We will honor America with our national anthem presented by Edwin McKean, national recording artist and South Carolina native. At this time, please rise for the invocation to be delivered by Harold King of the Darlington Raceway. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask thy blessings on this great American sporting event this day. May you look favorably upon the drivers and those that support them. May you surround them with your spiritual shield. Help us all to be sensitive of your presence here today. Now, Father, we ask you to join us as we go racing. In the name of Jesus, we offer this prayer. Amen.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, with the most exciting words in the world of motorsports, here is our Grand Marshal. Engines fire on pit road. Drivers at the ready to challenge this track for 400 miles. Hi, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds and Daryl O. Waltrip yeah, with a little bit of Irish luck, and you're going to need Eddie's, that today. Eddie's, Eddie's, Eddie's. To get to the checkered flag uh, after our F Troop pre-race. <laughs> well, Larry, now, if your car wasn't working too well in yesterday's bright and sunny and hot practice session, how do you feel about this cool, cloudy, damp weather today? Well, the agony of a crew chief continues here at Darlington. <laughs> you know, there are 43 cars in this field. About 41 of them that I talked to this morning are not happy. Lots of adjustments. They hope the cooler track temperatures solves a lot of their handling problems. That, ra that race car gripped that racetrack better. Now the two or three that were happy, they hope they've made the right adjustments to compensate for the cooler track temperatures. Now, Daryl, what if you're Sterling Marlin, who lost an engine yesterday, or Ryan Newman, who cut a tire and hit the wall in the last minute of practice? They have to start at the very back of this field. Well, that's our two point leaders, first and second. They're at the back. But let me tell you a, a, a key word here. We talk about anticipation, a lot of things. Knowledge. You need knowledge of this racetrack. You need to know when to lift out of that throttle and let that guy by on the inside. You know, need to know when to make that crossover move and run under a guy down here in turns one and two. You need knowledge. Experience, yeah, that's good if you've had good experiences here, but few have. <laughs> and you're going to need a little luck today to get through 400 miles on the track that's too tough to tame. Among the stories of the day, perhaps the happiest, is the return of Steve Park to NASCAR Winston Cup racing today. NASCAR, proud sponsor of the Bud Pole Award, given to the fastest qualifier at each Winston Cup race. Today, it's Ricky Craven. He'll be in the Bud Shootout of 2003 with these other drivers. Since 1979, Anheuser-Busch has awarded more than $7 million as title sponsor of the Pole Award program. And there's Craven getting set to roll off as we have a look at our Walmart starting grid for today's race. By three one-thousandths of a second, Craven won the Bud Pole. Over Jeff Gordon. Most flames will feel good today, Larry. Yeah. Nice, Newman. cool day. Yes, sir. Newman goes to the back in that backup car. Good run for Steve Park. Elliot Sadler. How about that? Why don't we see we get Steve Park, see how he's feeling. Let's do that. Steve Park, this is DW up in the TV tower. Bud, how you read? Pretty good, DW. You ready for 400 miles here on this old lady? Yeah, she's a, she's a tough old girl, but uh, I'm looking forward to running all 400 miles and feeling good at the end. How's your mount? Pretty good from yesterday? Ben's all car is running real good, and uh, like I said, with the rain that comes through, it's all curveball, but we're looking forward to uh, run the race and such again. Well, from all us up here in the TV tower and all your fans and the millions that are watching at home, good luck, my man. Stand on it. Thank you, DW. I just want to thank Pencil again for their support through this whole trying time. And my mom and dad. Steve's dad, Bob Park, former runner-up for the National Modified title. Longtime racer. His mom, Dottie, runs Steve's fan club. You saw Dave Blaney, who qualified 25th. He, like Ryan Newman and Sterling Marlin, he will have to go to the rear of the field. After happy hour, they found water in the oil, engine problem, changed that motor. He'll have to start at the back as well. And I want to document the reason that Ryan Newman wrecked yesterday. Wasn't overdriving the race car. They found it. He cut a left rear tire down. 
in the middle of the corner. Not the right place to happen. And what exactly, Larry, was Sterling Marlin's engine problem? They they pulled the lifters out. This is these guys are going through an inspection process. They're looking at push rods. They're looking at valve spring, and they pulled a lifter out and saw that it had some wear on it, which maybe indicates the camshaft was wearing out. Much better position being the points leader put a fresh motor in that thing. Yeah, it's not where you start. <laughs> it's it's where you finish, and you got to finish to maintain that point lead. So there's Sterling dropping back to the tail end, back behind Andy Hillenberg, who's in the Dave Marcus car today. There were 43 drivers here for the 43 qualifying spots, so nobody went home. Everybody's in the field. Now look at Sterling on our steering column cam. Sterling Marlin, this is DW at my TV tower, bud. How you read? Sterling, it's DW. How you read, bud? Sterling Marlin, it's DW. I'm a TV tower. How you read, bud? Got you loud and clear there, DW. Hey, it's a long way to the front, buddy. What you gonna do? I think we got a real good car. We just uh, gonna try to ease up through here, get a little track position, and uh, get where we need to be. Try to win this thing. 10-4, you were quick in both practices yesterday, so you got a pretty steady ride there. Good luck to you, bud. All right, thank you, sir. The rule in NASCAR, if you go to a backup car or a backup engine after the weekend starts, you start in the back, and that's where those three cars are, Matt. Well, Mike, one driver to keep your eye on is two-time Darlington winner Ward Burton. He doesn't have the same car he won with here last fall, winning the Southern 500. They gave that car to their teammate, Hus Strickland, who brought out a newer car, which is a sister car of the one that won here last fall. But the car, not to their liking, they made three minor changes this morning. They're hoping the cloud cover and those changes put this car back in victory lane today. To Steve. Well, Matt, I asked Ryan Newman's crew chief, Matt Borland, how does your strategy change now that you have to go to the back? And he kind of chuckled and said, we're just going to pass them one at a time. Really, our strategy doesn't change at all. We're going to do it on the racetrack, and we're going to help him also on pit road. Dick Berggren. Before a race starts, there's not a lot you can count on, but this one thing you can count on at Darlington this afternoon. Every time the caution flag waves, they're going to come in for tires. Most teams have a dozen sets of tires mounted up, $18,000 worth of them. That's because this place eats tires. Mike? Thanks, Dick. We're on the Dr. Souls pace lap. Green flag next time by. Remember, Dr. Souls helps you look, feel, and do better. So here they come off turn number four. For the final time, Building speed. Here they come. Coming down for the green flag. You're going to say it, aren't you? They know. All right, we're racing at Darlington. Wait till that last car makes it through one and two. Do you say we had a clean start? Oh, yeah, this is nervous times right here. Nervous times for everybody. Daryl, I've never seen a, a field go single file so fast. <laughs> well, it's only a lane and a half wide racetrack. Why? It's after just, they get 10 or 12 laps on those tires, they'll have to start moving that car around, find where their car drives a little better. And, and really, what you try to do here is you try to pounce on everybody as quickly as you can, try to pass as many as you can, because you got them grouped up here in front of you, and particularly if you're in the back, you got to be cautious, but you got to go, baby, you got to go. You know, just like that 1955 footage we saw in free race, Mike Skinner went into turn three on the flat and hey, you, found a way up in the bank. You can do that, but that's when you're going to put that big slide job on your buddy next to you, and you hope it's a controlled slide. <laughs> Jeff Burton, Kurt Busch, Michael Waltrip. It's all a battle for 12. And Kurt Busch really got his, I mean, he went in a position there that I would not suggest he tries very often. He went in there just a little to the outside of Michael, and that is treacherous. And you heard Jeremy Mayfield burp the throttle there, mid-corner. You drive the race car here as much, if not more, with the throttle pedal than you do your steering wheel. Yeah, you know, you want to you want to man it. You want to get it wide open because you can go fast, but that's impossible here. You play with that throttle all day long. Sean Robinson just got up in the wall down in three and four. And I, I, I don't think she's been on the track all weekend as she had hit the wall. She got her darling yep. stripes. Once in practice, once in qualifying. You see how that wall just looks like it's going to reach out and grab those cars? And a lot of times does. It actually does protrude out into the racetrack. It's not a symmetrical uh, 
wall as he comes off that corner. Clean and green through four laps. You know, one thing about all the drivers, they, for the most part, they respect this place and they know that they have to give everybody a break. The problem you run into here is after about two and a half, three hours, you get tired, you get irritated, and you stop giving people breaks, and that's when we have trouble. Darrell, looks like if you're not running flat out, it's more mentally draining to hold back. It, it takes so much composure, Mike, to drive here because you can't race the other cars. That's not the fact. You got to race the track and you got to play with the car all the time. Larry, how many times are we going to hear the spotters and the crew chiefs say, race the racetrack? You have to. I mean, you get in your own zone and you do your own deal. And in about lap 250, you see who's left and then you go race. Yeah, you know what? You, but that's what you do. But you know what's wrong with that? There's always somebody behind you wanting you to go on. Yeah. Like they, they don't have horns. They got bumpers and they use them. Like Earnhardt Jr. there alongside of Kevin Harvick. But I've been watching him, guys. He started back in the 23rd position. He just passed Kevin Harvick for the 16th position. He's been picking a car a lap off. He's been picking and choosing where he goes by him, Darrell. You know, I said, they all used to do that here all the time. He qualified terrible, but when that race started, he was the guy you wanted to follow to the front. Dale Earnhardt won nine races here at Darlington, second only to David Pearson, the track's all-time winner with 10. We're starting to see different agendas down in <laughs> three and four. We see some up against the wall. We see some of the cars running right around the bottom. It's where your car feels the best. I mean, a driver doesn't want to get up next to that wall. You want to leave yourself a little room for a little margin for error, but the car just slides up there. You can't help it. Mike Skinner's had a good run. Started 29th up to 19th. There's Bobby Hamilton inside of Johnny Benson and Brett Bodine and Hunt Strickland. I talked to Mike Skinner last night. One of the big improvements from the first four races is they said they found about 20 or 25 horsepower over the last week. There's just no substitute for horsepower anywhere we go. Well, I think what they did, they used a Hendrick engine a couple of times and realized that one of their problems was back at the motor room. They went back home and whooped up on Rutt Pittman, and uh, I think he's responded. You know, even though we hear him playing with the throttle, you still want as much horsepower as you can have when you finally go full on the throttle. All right, Matt Kenseth just went past Terry Levani, and now Sterling Marlin makes the same pass. So Marlin will climb to 32nd. And running side by side here takes so much time out of your lap time. As you were talking about Ryan Newman and Sterling Marlin in the opening, Daryl, I couldn't help but think, as a crew chief, you talk out of both sides of your mouth, you say, be patient, but hurry, you gotta yeah, go. That's right. Yeah, you're telling the driver to be patient. You got a stopwatch in one hand and the button in the other one. You got to keep, you got to get it, got to get it, but be patient, be patient. The leader, Ricky Craven, at Rockingham, he led the first 104 laps of the race, but now he is under pressure from Jeff Gordon. And one thing you'll hear here is don't let that guy hold you up. A car can hold you up and cost you a second a lap here. There's Steve Park closing in. Jimmy Johnson and Jimmy Spencer are the top five, 10 laps complete at Darlington. This is NASCAR on Fox. When we left, Ricky Craven was under pressure from Jeff Gordon, but Jeff Gordon had a mirror full of Steve Park, who has now moved to second place. Boy, Darrell, that's the best medicine there is right there. And, and folks at home, I, I don't know if you have any idea, any concept of what it takes for this young man to be back in this race car, Steve Park I'm talking about, performing at this level at this racetrack. There was just a few weeks ago, a few months ago, that we thought he had a career-ending injury. He has worked his self, he's worked hard, he's got himself back in shape, and here he is today getting ready to challenge for the lead at Darlington. You know, this type of racetrack has just always suited Steve Park. I mean, a year ago, he led the most laps, ran second here, should have won that race. This type of racetrack meaning a racetrack that's very abrasive, wears the tires out, the car starts sliding around. He won his race at a racetrack like this, which is Rockingham. He told me. We had him on the show that night, and he said, everything's fine, I just don't talk right. He said, but then I am from New York, so I didn't talk right to start with. Good, it, by our standards, right. I guess. Andy Hillenberg and the Dave Marcus car made a pit stop. They lifted the hood and then pushed Hillenberg to the garage area. Let's get an update on the front row starters from Dick Bergman. Well, Ricky Craven's car is a bit tight. That's his problem. That's why he is dropping back. Ricky Craven also is a little bit tighter than he wants to be. Meanwhile, Steve Parks and told him, you've got a good car, but we'll hear this all day. Take care of your tires. Boy, he is getting in that third turn. Woo! 
He drives that thing down in there, and uh, so far it's stuck, but he better be careful. He's all over the back of Craven, and he's going to put the big move on him right down here. Here he comes. Put the crossover move on him. Nah, it wasn't quite in position. That's what you do there, though. You run that guy down in that corner as hard as you can to make him slide up the hill. Whoa! <laughs> like Come that slide. <laughs> <laughs> and all you can do, Daryl, is back off the throttle, and that's what allowed Steve Park. He was able to stay in the throttle, takes the lead here, turn three and four, lap 19. Look at these fans. Look at these people on their feet. There was your crossover move right there. He just did it on the other end of the racetrack. Didn't quite pull it off. That, this place is notorious for that. Slide up, cut under. You're carrying so much speed on the exit of these corners. I mean, you've been in the throttle for a corner and a half when you get to the exit, and you're just carrying so much speed, you run out of race. Well, when you, when you drive in that hard to get by the guy, you've got to get on the brakes, because if you don't, you'll slide into the fence. And while you're on the brakes, the other guy turns under you and drives by you. You know, I want to talk about the guy who finished last at Daytona, but he's followed up with three straight top five finishes and moved to fifth in points. Tony Stewart almost wrecked qualifying the other day. He did get in there on time at 36, but he's only moved up two positions. I don't think anyone expected him to stay back there and not make a bunch of moves. He's in 34th right now. And based on the way that car usually runs, he likes to ride around the bottom of the racetrack. That car works good that way, and you cannot do that here. You've got to get up next to that outside retaining wall and scrape it. And he's almost two-thirds of a lap behind the leader already, so they're coming in a hurry. Like I said, scrape it, not hit it. Oh, you can hear there, Stewart spends a lot of time out of the throttle in the middle of that corner. Yeah, he, which is easy to say from up here. I'm sure down there it's a handful. The car's probably too tight, and they're, they're probably make some adjustments, and he will get better, but uh, he's uh, a half a lap behind the leaders right now. Ward Burton there being challenged as they roll down the back stretch by Bill Elliott, two Dodges going at it, and Jimmy Spencer now has Jeff Green reeled in Spencer at fifth place. And we talk about this so much about these guys that come in here and run the Bush race on Saturday. And now the Bush race is after all the Winston Cup practice is over. So I just think you get a better read of the racetrack, what it's going to do in race conditions. And Jeff Green uh, finished in the top five yesterday. You have to believe he comes in here and makes adjustments based on what he learned yesterday. And this track, I don't care what anybody tells you, it might be cloudy, it might be the overcast, it might be cool, but it's still the slickest track we go to. All it does is a little more comfort for the driver. Here's Jeff Burton, who's moved up to 11. And let's check with Steve Burns. Well, Mike, we've been listening to Ryan Newman. He says he's both loose and tight. The biggest problem he has in that 12 car is that he has absolutely no grip. They've got some spring rubbers loaded up in that 12 car, and he wants them out. I talked to Matt Moore and his crew chief this morning. I said, Matt, tell me about the history of this backup car. Uh, how, how many races, how much time do you have with it? He said, we have about 40 feet with it. From what? the shop to the chassis dyno to the truck. Oh, Brand new race car just finished this week. And, and as a driver, let me tell you, and if you haven't driven a race car, even though you build them all alike, you get in and the pedals aren't exactly where you like them. And the seat's not exactly like you need it. He didn't have a chance to practice this car. So he's out there in a car that he hadn't been in all ever with a lot of things that are probably very distracting to him. 17th place race here. You saw Ricky Rudd go on and take that spot as Michael Waltrip now tries to fend off Mark Barton. Uncle Mike loose. Sean Robinson off the pace back straight away. Already gone two laps down. And and that car slows, looks like it's coming back in. Yeah, they wasn't even really intending on racing here. They decided on Tuesday to come here, and she said, we're just going to try to use it as a test session just to get our feet wet with each other between her and the race team. Steve Park, who last year led the most laps and finished second in his comeback race, is leading from Ricky Craven, Jeff Gordon, and Jimmy Johnson. Welcome back to Darlington. Steve Park leads. Hut Strickland had moved up from his 39th starting spot up to 24th, but just gave two of those spots back as Sterling Marlin went past and took Jerry Nadeau with him. Well, what you do when you move up like that, you know your car is good. And so you, you, you relax a little bit and you can give up a spot or two here. If the guy gets the pressure in you, that's the best thing to do is let him go by. Hut finished second here. 
Labor Day 1996, one of his two career best second place finishes. And you just have to believe with his teammate Ward Burton being always as good as he is, they took some of those setups from those guys. But look at Dave Blaney in the 77. Remember, he had to start at the rear of the field with Sterling Marlin that group as well. He's moved back up to 27th position, battling Hunt here for 26. So uh, he's got a good race car, just taking his time trying to get to the front. Plus, this is about, about 30, 35, 40 laps is when the car goes through an incredible change, like flip the switch. Those new tires that you start to race on, all of a sudden, they're not new anymore, and that thing starts to get in that Darlington slide to it. Well, a fuel window here is about 65 to 70 laps. About lap 30 to 40, the old driver comes on there and says, how much longer for we pit? That's exactly right. <laughs> I need me four tires. And it is. It's just like you flip a switch. I'm telling you, you're riding along, car's handling good, running good, everything's fine. All of a sudden, it takes off of the wall, and the next thing you know, you're out of control. But, Jeff, this is when, as a crew chief, you really start interrogating that driver, especially with the different track conditions. What's your car doing? What do you need? What do we need to adjust on that? Thing. Yeah, and you also, Larry, you try to remind him, and I know it makes a lot of drivers mad, just be patient, slow down, just try to smooth everything out, let's see if we can get back in some kind of rhythm. A lot of times we talk about get that rhythm, get that rhythm, and it'll be okay. Think about what's going on, driver, just be smooth, and I know it sounds redundant, but that's the kind of things you have to tell a driver here, race that racetrack, be patient, get you some tires in about 10 laps, and you keep telling 10 laps to 30 laps, and before too long he knows he's lying to you, but... You got to the end of that pit stop, and that's what matters. That's why me and Jeff got along so good. I like the way he lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve Park got a, maybe got a little impatient with Rick Mast here. Maybe Mast just doesn't get a good run off the corner. I'm not so sure. Sometime a guy's trying to get out of the way and can't. Yeah. And that this, looks like a, one of those deals. This is a tough racetrack to get oh, yeah. out of the way. You don't just turn down to the inside. I mean, you just don't have the grip to do that. You've got to kind of anticipate what you're going to do. Park trying to maintain his momentum and briefly got up against the back bumper of Rick Mast. Talked about Tony Stewart a while ago. He's starting to make a little bit of a move. He's going uh, working on Brett Bodine in 11 car here. This is a battle for the 30th position. He's getting Whoa. a little impatient. Yeah, guess what he did? He told him he was back there. He yeah. said, give him that little nudge. I don't want to fool with you no more. No, I'm tired of messing with you. You're holding me up. I got to go. Back when the cars had chrome bumpers, we used to call that the chrome horn. Beep, and beep. I, our guys in the pits, they never quit working on what's going on. Tony Stewart, his race car is tight. It's not turning. And you have to believe that's a product of these cooler track conditions. Everybody anticipated the racetrack would be tighter today. But look at our graphic. Tony's got to go because that's all he lacks from going a lap down to Steve Park. And, and I can't tell you how many times I've been running here and be running, say I've been running 31 seconds by myself. I run up on a car trying to get by him, and I'm running 32.50. So yeah, now, you got a pass. Now, don't worry about Tony. Remember last September, he started 33rd. He finished fourth. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't, I'm certainly not counting him out by any means. There you see the leader, Steve Park, coming off turn four. About a straightaway difference. So, uh, Tony Stewart, that's the reason he's up there bumping Brett Bodine. That spotter and that crew chief's telling him the leader's coming. Darrell, we've talked all weekend on FX and on Fox Sports Net about how, okay, one lap for these young guns to hold their breath, but it's going to take an experienced driver run up front here all day. Only one young gun in the top ten in yesterday's Bush race. But how about rookie Jimmy Johnson? Started fourth, and he's running the top five. For there we go, Park. Oh. Park. Gordon gets passed to Steve Park, hard in the wall. Park, got the uh, right front corner pretty good in the right side of the car. 32 car. Got damage. Yep, Ricky Craven, the whole front of his car is stove in as Steve Park, the race leader, and Ricky Craven, the pole Good sitter, crash. And he was trying to get around Craig. Stacey Compton, who was trying to stay on the lead lap in the 14 car. Yeah, you see that the 14 car got it's all torn up on the right side. He goes down here underneath him. It's hard to stay underneath the guy. You just got to have that. You need oh. that room to slide up. Compton didn't give it to him, and he didn't do anything wrong. Not that Compton did anything wrong, but you've got to go in there low. You've got to have room to slide up. Here's a different angle. See, Steve's going to try to get clear him and slide in front of him, but he just he doesn't quite get there. And again, we want to stress, Stacy Compton was trying to get to the high side of the racetrack. He didn't do anything wrong oh, in the 14 no. car. No, that's, that's the problem with this racetrack. There's nowhere to go. You can't get out of the way. Oh, Jimmy Spencer just got through there. That's when I'd be hauling in my spotter, because I'm sure the spotter told him to go high. Oh, that's a shame. That is a shame. There you see Ricky Craven just nowhere to go. Jeff Gordon in the 24. Jimmy Johnson 
going all the way to the bottom of the racetrack. Pit road will be very busy, Matt Yoakum. Well, Larry, they're going to make a chassis adjustment on the 22 car of Warren Burton. He was lacking forward bite. As you see, Mike Brown, the team's general manager, make the chassis adjustment. Another four-tire change, obviously, because this track is so gritty here at Darwin. Now Jeff Gordon has just found his pit. He's got nobody in front of him now. Ricky Craven would have been in front of him had he not been going to the garage area. Gordon's car tight all day. His conversation on the radio has stressed that it is getting tighter and tighter as the run went on. So will be a four-tire change. They're going to try to get that tight out of there. And he is the first guy out of the pitch. He'll be your leader. Steve Park is out of his car as you watch the race off pit road. That is good news. Ricky Craven has driven his car to the garage. Dick reported. And there's no sense in telling you people at home how many tires people change here. When you yeah. come to pit road, you get four tires, trust me. And in, 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 the, in the park incident, that's just Darlington. Uh, we're at 30-some uh, laps into the run here, and uh, the tires are wearing down. The car's lost some grip. He needed the room to slide up and didn't quite make it. That's a good sight right there. A little wave to the crowd. Steve Park is okay but couldn't tame this track today. Whole sitter Ricky Craven is out. Welcome back to Darlington. Steve Park was welcome back. First race in six months when he was knocked out at Darlington, but came in confident with the clearance of his team and doctors and NASCAR starting fourth. Almost goes into the wall, then took the lead on lap 19. Park leading on lap 38 between turn three and four runs into Stacy Compton and then Ricky Craven pulls it a running into Steve Park and his uh, two career Winston Cup victories as uh, he steps uh, out of the car. He is okay, but done for the day. Ricky Craven, as they work on his car to try again back in the race in the last 17 races here in Darlington, only once has the pole sitter won this race. Let's get on to Steve Burns and check in on Ricky Craven. Steve? Thanks, Chris. Ricky, a lot of damage to this race car. What happened and can you get back in the race today? It's obviously not where we expected to be. We, uh, you know, you always think about the ones that got away and uh, pretty frustrated that uh, that didn't need to happen. And, uh, you know, we just got swept into it. Really, uh, really proud of Steve coming back and would love to have raced him and Jeff there for the win. I had a car good enough to do it. The Tide Ford was great, but uh, I'll tell you what, you know, the lap car has got to give consideration to leaders. You know, it's, uh, it's just a great example of a guy not using his head. We're leading the, the race. You need, you need to give some consideration. And uh, we'll get over it, and we'll uh, go at him next week. Back upstairs, Mike. Thanks, Steve. You do damage assessment in this business with one of those DeWalt power saws. That's, yeah. Uh, and you got pay, quite a work out there. $25,000 to have that body put on there. Spend hours in the wind tunnel and meticulously hey, working on it and then her, just cut it off with a saber saw. Throw it in the ground. Throw After the ground. pit stops, Jeff Gordon leaves Elliot Sadler along with Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Spencer, and Jeff Green for this restart. I like the way that 21 car. It's looked good all weekend long. Came in an ace of picking him there, Hammond, but... Couldn't bet against Jeffy today. And obviously, those guys doing their job on pit road, getting him up to second. Yeah, Jeff Burton peeks out from uh, behind is that Bill Elliott. Yes, it is, and Burton goes on. Everybody on fresh tires. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. Moves in on Jeff Green. This is for fifth place. He just keeps on keeping on. He started back in 23rd, and as we saw in the beginning of the race, he just he was taking a car a lap. Well, I, I tell you what I noticed about his car. It is really, really fast on new tires. For about 20 laps, he can he can haul the mail, but then he starts to slide back. We'll watch, his, uh, we'll watch the tachometer here. You'll notice in the middle of the corner, he'll get back in. It'll raise RPMs, and he backs off the throttle. It falls back down a little bit, but he's turning all over 9,000 on fresh tire. Speeds a little bit quicker as we go down the uh, front stretch. And that's one of the things that probably will the cool weather will do is not slow the cars down quite so much, and gear selection could be really, really critical today. And over 170 miles an hour into turn three. And just to give you an idea, a 411 gear is kind of gear of choice here. Sometimes you'll pull a 22. Some of these cars today got 430 gears in them. That's going to really tax that engine. And just remember, the higher number is the lower gear. 
and more RPM. From a 411 to a 430, you're probably talking about 400 RPM difference. If you knew you only had short runs, you'd pull a much higher gear because you're going to turn more RPMs. But for the longer runs where the RPMs are going to get lower, you put that lower gear in to compensate. Well, I always called it my passing gear. Uh, I'd pull as low a gear as I thought I could possibly get away with, so I caught some, when I caught somebody, I could get around them. We talked earlier about Jeff Green being one of those drivers to have the advantage of running in both yesterday's Bush race and today's Cup race. Jeff Burton's another who led every lap yesterday. Let's go down to Green's pit. Here's Matt. Mike, they lost one spot on pit road. Currently, Jeff Green's running in the fifth position. Todd, how is your race car today? Uh, Jeff hasn't said a whole lot about it. It's been pretty good. Uh, like he was a contender to win down there. They had a motor problem there and uh, put an end to their day. How about the Burton brothers battling here? Jeff has the spot and Ward wants it. He's had a peek underneath his younger brother and here he goes. Well, these two guys here for brother act, they're pretty good here at Darlington. Well, when they used to race South Boston Speedway in Virginia in late models. They, they'd come home with two busted race cars. They'd race each other harder than anybody else there. Well, they've taken turns winning here, too. So they, uh, they've they obviously shared notes. they got two totally different cars. Uh, one's in a Dodge, one's in a Ford, but they uh, seem to run the same. Talk about two guys that share notes. How about the two red cars there behind Jeff Burton, Bill Elliott and Jeremy Mayfield? Both those cars continue marching toward the front. Just watch this. <laughs> that seems to be our favorite saying. <laughs> hey, just watch this. Kyle Petty and Robbie Gordon in close quarters again. Robbie just scoots. Kyle gets him a little loose right there. Gets, Robbie gets Kyle a little loose. Dives to the inside. But you see how much momentum means. Those guys there were laid back off of them a little bit. Got to run on them and pass them into the turn, third turn. Yeah, Ryan Newman and, and Brett Bodine were right there. Steve Park has been released from the care center. Here's Steve Burns. Thanks, Mike. Steve, first of all, are you okay? Tell us what happened. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm Glad I didn't have to spend a lot of time in this care center, you know, like I did in the past. But, I mean, the Penzo car was running great, you know. Just lap traffic all day long was giving us a hard time. And, I mean, I got under 14 car pretty clean and gave him a break. And uh, he turned me around. Let's got my right rear quarter panel. And uh, I met her than I looked. I mean, uh, I really thought we had a car today that would win the race. And, uh, you know, the Pennzoil Chevrolet got put out too early, just too, too early, I think. So uh, this is a long race, and patience is a key role. And, you know, when you're going to lap down so early in the race, um, give the leader a little bit of a break. I mean, the leader will give you a break if you want to get a lap back. So uh, it's just a shame. You know, it's the first race back. We wanted to see it to the end, and uh, I'm just severely disappointed in that. Thanks, Steve. All right, thank you. And boy, I can feel his pain because when you're leading the race, you do, you do anticipate those guys giving you a break because you are the leader. But then you got to put your other, put your other hat on and look at the guy trying to stay on the lead lap, you know. Yep. So uh, understand both sides of the situation, but you don't need to wreck the leader. Five-time Darlington winner Jeff Gordon, right now in command of the Carolina Dodge Dealers 400. Jeff Gordon, a five-time winner here, has a, has a one-second lead, but in second place, driving for the Wood Brothers, who have won here eight times, Elliot Sadler. Jimmy Johnson, third. Jimmy Spencer, fourth. Jeff Green, fifth. We've had one caution. As leader Steve Park was lapping Stacy Compton, the two cars got together in turn three. Second-place driver Ricky Craven was swept into this wreck. Couldn't clear it down low, and let's listen to the radio chatter from Craven. Got it, just got it. Come on, Ricky. It knocked the whole front of the car off. There was nothing I could do about that, guys. We took the leader out. Go to the garage, guys. Go to the garage. Just go to the garage. Just get the saws out, get everything ready. Yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. There wasn't nothing you could do. Craven spotter Donnie Epling frustrated because he couldn't get his driver, couldn't clear him out away from that wreck. Well, you just hear the frustration in everybody, boys. Ricky Craven, crew chief Mike Bean, the team. Uh, you know, you come in here 12th in points. You've had a good year. You sat on the pole. You're up there running second. 
uh, and you watch it all go away in a matter of about a half a second. And I believe, you know, Steve Park is probably very disappointed, but I would say mission accomplished. Came back, qualified well, raced led, well, led the race, can't help what happened. There's Elliot Sadler coming from seventh place up to second. It's been a year since he won. That was at Bristol, where we go next weekend. Boys, I want to talk about our points later, and I might add the, the car that Jeff Hammond picked, Sterling Marlin, again, had to start at the rear of the field after having to change motors. With a little help from his guys on pit road, but a good race car, he's up to the 14th position battling Ken Schrader right here. Just past Kenny. And that's for 13. That's uh, two of the senior circuit drivers. Now, Schrader is 47. Marlins right up there. Bill Elliott's 47. No, none of these drivers were born when this track was built. <laughs> uh, how about Dale Jr. in that Budweiser car? This is a battle for fifth with Jeff Green. Jeff Green knew he was faster. Yeah. It's like take the position. Jeff got a little bit loose right there in the middle of the corner as well. Had to lift up. And that's what Steve Park wishes Stacy Compton had done as yeah. they both went into that corner. Wish Compton had rolled out of the throttle, let Steve slide up the racetrack, and everybody goes on. Uh, I mean, didn't happen. Park is, a, you know, he's 100% right for what he, I think, thought was going to happen. Uh, and, and Compton just held his line. Well, he was trying to stay on the lead lap, and it, unfortunately, was an exercise in futility and took three cars, two cars out of the race. Compton was able to repair and continue. See that yellow car coming into the picture is Ward Burton. And Bill Davis is Dodge. He's now right up against Jeff Green. This is for sixth place. And you know, Ward is an aggressive, I mean, he's a hard driving little guy. And to run as well as he does here at Darlington, time and time again, uh, they that amazes me. Because he, he really is good at this racetrack. Looks like on Jeff Green in the 30, they either went the wrong way with adjustments. His car just, as the racetrack's getting more and more rubber on it, his car just is not driving very good. It's, it's bouncing around on him right there in the middle of one and two. There's some little whoop de doos up there in the middle of that corner, and if the car's a little loose, it'll really upset it. Not only is this racetrack rough, it's very bumpy all the way around, especially in the corners. Yeah, we got got what I call whoop de doos They're just little swoopy places where the car bounces a little bit, and you don't need to bounce with no grip. You're riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr. as you see Ward Burton closing in on the fifth place car. Let's go to Junior's pit and Matt. Well, Mike Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on pace to score his best ever finish here at Darlington, which is 11th. Last fall, he was 17th early in this run, though, today. He says his car is a little bit on the loose side. And this car actually was going to go to Bristol next week, but they put a brand new body on it. They thought the car looked so good, they decided to bring it here. And if it survives, Darlington don't knock out all the dead. Bristol, but just keep in mind how tough this place has been for Dale Earnhardt Jr. This is how the car looked the last time he ran here, and they wanted to remind him, think, this place is a driver's racetrack if you think about it. You're hoping to have a good day today, but look at that. Nick? Just keep, Jeff Gordon just keyed his radio and told the crew the car is a little bit loose. That's good news for two reasons. First, the car has been tight, and that means on that last pit stop, they've got it fixed. Second, it also means they got a radio problem fixed. They had a serious radio problem. All they had on the radio for about two or three minutes was just plain static. And you should have seen the ballet that went on down here in their pit. Has everybody changed channels, and they've got it all working again. Well, Dick, Bobby Labonte is running in the 10th position in the 18 car. He told his crew chief, Jimmy Maycar, I can't get back on the gas like I want to in the center of the corner. He said, went on to apologize, saying, I can't give you the information you need to help this race car. What does he mean by that, Daryl? That he can't give Jimmy the information that he needs? Well, they haven't made enough pit stops, I believe, to be able to accumulate tire data, and other information and he's not giving them all the information they need right now but they need another pit stop or two to be able to figure out what's going on you know daryl as i listen to the report on jeff gordon in the 24 and daryl hart jr in the eight saying their car's a little loose if i'm the crew chief and you're a little loose here as long as you're fast and can maintain the same speed i'm going to be very hesitant to tighten that race car up and hurt make it start pushing because this racetrack will just get tighter and tighter yeah well drivers you know are notorious for wanting the car to be perfect and will over adjust. That's right.
Jeff Gordon by 1.8 seconds leads Elliott Sadler, Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Spencer, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. here at Darlington. Jeff Gordon leading at Darlington by one second over Elliott Sadler. Today's KFC track facts. This is the 98th Winston Cup race here. Johnny Mance won the first Southern 500 in 1950. Bill France Sr. was one of four owners of that car, along with Curtis Turner. They wanted to expand the track, but there was no room on the front stretch, so they turned it around. What was the front stretch is now the back stretch, and they knocked down the back stretch stands and built the area where we are today. That's how old this joint is. They ran it for 50 years one way, now they're going to run it 50 years for the other way. That's our track back. There's fast food, and then there's KFC. Ah, oh, you take a K and an E and an N and a T and a U and a CKY. That spells Kentucky, but it means paradise. Here's a battle for third right here. Jimmy Spencer in the 41. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 Lowe's car. Spencer, he, Darrell, he's always ran pretty well here. Had a good run here last year. Yeah, the fastest driver on the track is right behind these two. Ward Burton just cleared Jeff Green, and he, there's Burton. He's coming on that bunch. Well, he is. But I think it shows, it would show something to me, if the 48 car and the 24 car are teammates, they run like teammates. What does that say about the five and the 25? Who are members of the same team. Same team who run like teammates. I believe if I was in that deal, I'd be wanting to get on the 24 and 48 teams out of everything. It's the other side of the screen or the team. Matt. Well, Mike, an update down here from the 30, but you heard Jeffrey and Scucci and Todd Barrier say a few laps ago that their car was tight earlier in the race, and it is still tight even after that air pressure change. He's tight on entry, DW, and he's tight off. 12th place, Kenny Schrader slips and slides up in front of Kevin Harvick, and here comes Dale Jarrett, last yeah. year's winner. That little bar, and you got to get out of the throttle, and when you do, it just opens the door for someone like Dale Jarrett, who was in the right place at the right time. And you know, as I look at Dale Jarrett, I've talked to Todd Parrott and Jimmy Elliott this morning. They've been running a lot of their in-house chassis. They decided to bring a much older car here that's a Hopkins, a store-bought chassis, just to see if maybe they've been off base a little bit with their in-house chassis. I can't tell you, Larry, how many times has that happened? Many times. You're doing your own deal, and you say, we're just not getting it done. we got to go back to the basics. And a basic car is either a Hopkins or a Laughlin. That's something a driver can relate to. Whoa! Kevin Harvick. I'm sorry, Daryl. It's okay. These fellas have come off that corner and take your breath. You could read the whole right side of Harvick's car as he came off the corner and we were looking straight at the nose. <laughs> you know, here's Matt Kenseth in the 17 car. Of course, won the race at Rockingham in this very car. He started back in 34th. He's up to 17th. I talked to Robbie Riser, his crew chief, this morning. I said, how are you, man? He said, I don't understand it. He said, you know, we have tried our Rockingham setup. We've tried the setup that we ran well with here a year ago. It's not working. They were on the four springs, four shock sway bar change this morning. Changed almost every piece of that race car. Well, that's when I go around on Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, and I get all the information I get, and I come back to my crew chief Sunday morning, and I say, look, here's what so-and-so's doing, and here's what yeah. so-and-so's doing, and here's what they're doing, and I take all that information, and I say, here's what we're going to do. You go to that motor coach lot. That's right. We have a meet. <laughs> Here's Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Green. They've gone past uh, the four of Mike Skinner, who's gone a lap down, and Ward Burton has already passed this group. Ward is up to fourth place. And moving toward the front, as you see on Fox Track, that's the interval from Jeff Gordon back to Ward in fourth. Yeah, well, he's visibly closing that gap down. Slowly but surely, I've been watching the lap times. They've been, for most laps, they've been running pretty close to each other. Jeff Gordon, the leader of Ward Burton. But you it's, see it just ever so slightly creeping down. He's closing in. A bunch in the middle of the corner. He really went through the middle of the corner right there. You saw that interval jump a bunch. Yeah. Inch by inch. Step by step. And, Darrell, that's not entry speed here. That's picking up the throttle sooner than somebody else is. And then here's Gordon, uh, our leader, that's caught up in some heavy traffic. And that will knock a bunch of time out of your lap time. You can you can be held up as much as a second a lap. You can have a huge lead and uh, just have to sit there and wait. Two of the petty cars Here's, just in front of see Gordon. See the 21 car? It just, I mean, he comes from nowhere because Gordon can't go. And he knows, unlike, you know, what happened earlier, he can't. He's going to get underneath that car, but he's going to wait till that car goes all the way up against the outside wall. All right, you're riding with Elliott Sadler, second place car underneath Casey Atwood. Now, clear, clear. 
Here you see the telemetry on Elliott Sadler, the second place car. See those RPMs? You can hear it. It goes with the throttle. You back off the throttle, the RPMs up here, they go down. Roll out of that throttle, way down here, down at that end of the racetrack, turn three and four, much tighter end of the racetrack. Driving that car with that throttle pedal. Sadler clears John Andretti on the high side as Jeff Gordon tries to put a lap on Kyle Petty. That's the way they run here at Darlington. Jeff Gordon leads by 1.8 seconds over Elliott Sadler. You watch uh, Sterling Marlin there, just ahead of Jeremy Mayfield. Marlin moving up into the top 10 at ninth place. There is the lead gap. Gordon back to Elliott Sadler. Okay, Larry, how much how much longer are you going to keep me out here? I'm getting a little nervous. I'm here figuring right now. Jeff Hammond, it's one of those deals, you, you know, we, we documented. You can run about 65 laps on fuel. They were on pit road at lap 38, somewhere around lap 100 to 105. But, Jeff, the whole deal, uh -oh, 31 got cars. trouble off turn four. Robbie Gordon, a lot I think of smoke tire smoke. Car. Tire smoke. Now he's got a tire down. Well, he hit the wall earlier, and they tried to keep him out there for a yeah. while before they pitted the car, but... Caution is on the no, You know what he's done? He's broken the rear track bar. His rear end is wobbling all over the place. Yes, he has, and that's probably a product from going up and hitting the wall. Smacked that fence. John Andretti smacked the wall twice, had to make an unscheduled green flag pit stop. Shauna Robinson has been into the wall twice, and that car has been retired. And now here, let's see Robbie Gordon's first collision with the concrete. Hey, there's one of your bilge pumps. Brake blower. Brake blower. Here's the first one, Daryl. Back in, hops out. Bam. And, and there's no kidding. You hit the wall that hard, you probably broke that track bar, man. Well, he didn't break it that time. He just wounded it. Wounded now, this it. This time, he's going to take it on out. Bam. She came out that time. There's a lot of cars. They needed this pit stop right here. Everybody oh, yeah, there road. was guys that were so close to going a lap down. Good guys. Jeff Burton in the 99 thought he had a tire going down. He wasn't far from going a lap down. Pit road is open. That's Robbie the key Gordon a lot of in. times. Uh, the key a lot of times is if you can just stay on that lead lap till you get about two-thirds or halfway through the race. Matt? Mike, Tommy Baldwin Jr. and Tommy Wallace going to work on the right side. No adjustments for Ward Burton's double deuce. The filter car was very good on that long run to Dick. Burton's on his way down pit road for one of the pit stops in which he is, as always, going to take four tires. Greg Corioni from Sanborn, New York, carrying front tires. Todd Gant's going to change the front tire to Steve. Well, Dick, Jimmy Spencer getting service a half round down on that track bar. Four tires for Jimmy Spencer. And he's down pit road ahead of Ward Burton. A long pit road. Here comes Spencer. Will he beat Gordon out? No. It's going to be Jeff Gordon, Elliott Sadler, and Spencer. The first three off Ward Burton will come out for it. Well, Spencer had a wheel of a pit yes, stop there. Did. I mean, he moved him. But you know what I like about his pit position, even though he's either bit big pit boxes he has an opening behind him no, nobody right has up. to drive around come right into his pit box his pit pits is back up here and there's an opening just like there is right here and that's where you don't garage. have nobody to block you right. coming in yeah it's where you go into the garage and that opening is uh that's the opening at the end of end of pit road right there let's ride with the uh, robbie gordon We'll show you what it's like here when you dance with the lady in black. Of course, you don't have both ends on my uh, train. You got a problem with it making all kinds of noise. Make sure you drive down the other thing. We're under the second caution of the day at Darlington. We're turning this opening right here, Robbie O'Meara. Jeremy Mayfield penalized 15 seconds for not having a catch can man in place when they started fueling. So he lost 14 spots on this exchange. Tony Stewart gained five spots with his pit stop. The fellow wants us to crank it up. All right, we're back under green.
That Jimmy Spencer in that 41, he, he is driving that race car right now. Kind of expecting him to run good here. This is the same car he had at Rockingham. He was very competitive with until an ignition box went out. Here he goes. This is what we saw from Spencer yesterday in the Bush race on every restart. Jimmy would run hard for the first five or ten laps, picking up spots, challenging for the lead. And sometimes that's good, Daryl, but you get the goody out of the tire. You use up too much tire in the beginning. I, I know y'all always, oh, man, he is driving. Look at it, sliding that thing off the corner. But you always say, save your tires. Save your tires. You can't save tires. No, not here. There's no way to save tires. You just race. don't want to. You don't, don't, don't save them. Just don't abuse them. Well, but uh, now Spencer was abusing his off a of two-over. He had the thing in a four-wheel slide, crossed up. Darrell, compare the lines here between Spencer uh, and Gordon. Well, there's really, there's a preferred line, and that's the one that Gordon is in. The only way that Jimmy's going to get by him is get the nose down under him, and usually think you'll push up off the two when you do that. Now, you come down here, if you had to, if you wanted to, you could try to drive underneath of him right here, but you got to be sure you got the grip to do it with. And it, now, you bog the car down. down. Spencer's coming out of there. That lower line, you bog the car down. Gordon's going to beat you up out of the hole. Just to give you an idea, these guys were running like 30, 18, 30, 20 before that pit stop on 40, 50 lap tires. They were running 32, 40s, and 50s. And more I, on the leader, Dick Bergman. Well, Jeff Gordon had another quick pit stop. He came in first, went out first. Very slight adjustment on the chassis. He's got a great race car today. Now, Darrell, if you're Jeff Gordon, are you distracted by Spencer gnawing at your bumper there? Quite honestly, I'm surprised that Jeff is uh, racing Spencer as hard as he is. Spencer is a hard racer. We all know that. I think as long as he doesn't get up there and start bumping around on Jeff, Jeff will probably try to get away from him. But he ain't going to put up with much of that Jimmy Spencer stuff coming up there and roughing him up. All right, Robbie Gordon is in the garage. Here's Steve. Thanks, Mike. There's about 14 different mechanics working on the 31 car of Robbie Gordon. Big problems that have to replace the drive shaft. What happened, Robbie? Um, I got the wall a couple laps earlier, and uh, I don't know. I just went into turn, turn three and just stepped out on me really big. It's unfortunate. You know, I tried to talk myself into, into liking this place, and every time I come here, I just like it. So, you know, it's a, it's a tough racetrack. Um, I watched an interview with Dale Jr., and he said he hated the place also, but he said he's going to talk himself into liking it. I said, you know what? I'm going to go in there with that same attitude. You know what? I still don't like this place. I will let him get back to work. Also, guys, just to note, Bobby Labonte, they went up two rounds on the track bar, two rounds of wedge out, and pulled a spring rubber out of the right rear. For, for, oh, man, go ahead. For the W, an update down here in the eighth at Dale Earnhardt Jr. Two great stops today at 13.81 and at 13.80. A few comments from Dale Jr. He said that the car was driving off turn two like a limo on an ice rink. Then somebody chimed in like he's done that a lot. But they did make a track bar adjustment, went down half a round to try to tighten up that number eight machine. Then he said, uh, how many laps are, are in this race? And somebody said 393. He's like, oh, man, you're killing me. I've got to go 300 more laps. They go, no, 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 293 goes, oh, thank goodness. Maybe it handled like that Zamboni he drove in that Olympics promo. You know, for two or three days, you're in denial here. <laughs> Everybody, you, you go around saying, no, it can't be that bad. It can't be that bad. And then you get in the race. See how tight they run, and this track looks too narrow to pass on. Sometimes it is. Well, that's why they get down on the apron. I mean, we run on the apron here a lot, trying to pass people. Going into three, going into one, you'll always have the left side wheel down on the apron. After a particularly frustrating day here, Kyle Petty once said they should fill this place with water and stock it with fish. <laughs> uh, everybody has a favorite thing they like to say about Darlington. Some we can repeat and some we can't. You saw Ricky Rudd make the pass, the most experienced driver here. This is his 51st start at Darlington in the Winston Cup car. And later this season, he will break, hopes to break, Terry Labonte's record for consecutive Winston Cup race starts. Now here comes Harvick right back after him. Two distinct different lines right there. Ricky Rudd on the high side, Kevin Harvick in the 29 on the bottom. And what happened, what can happen to you, you go in, you're leading the guy, you run the good line, all of a sudden your car pushes up, you got to get out of the throttle, that guy gets a run on you, he passes you, and you know you're faster than he is, so you go right back and pass him back. Whoa, Johnny Benson just had a toss and catch it there coming off the corner. Here's back Jimmy Johnson, seventh. seventh place. Now, 
guy that you won't hear us say a word about hardly all day is that guy in that red car. But at the end of the day, he will be up in the top five or six. Million dollar bill. Bill Elliott won the first Winston Million here in 1985. He has an understanding of this racetrack, and he knows how far to push it and knows how when to hold it. Unless he gets caught up in a wreck, his car will probably not have a scratch on it at the end of the day. He does not want a Darlington strike. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Spencer are separated by just a quarter of a second with Elliott Sadler's Ford in third and Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s Chevrolet in fourth. Back to Darlington with Jeff Gordon, your leader over Jimmy Spencer through 110 laps. And if you want your NASCAR coverage to last all week, make sure your cable system carries the new Speed Channel, home of NASCAR TV. The old Speed Vision Reborn as Speed Channel, the home for NASCAR. Call your local cable or satellite provider for Speed Channel and build your need for speed. Jeff Hammond, as we uh, take a look at Jeff Gordon, he's trying to snap out of a slump. He's won here five times more than any other driver. But how about the points leaders coming in? One, two, Sterling Marlin and Ryan Newman had to start way back at the back of the pack, and they are making some moves. Yes, they are. And we see Sterling right here. That experience, as Daryl talks about all the time, starting dead last, has worked his car all up to fourth place. Now all of that is kind of like, you know, a wash. He's back on track where he needs to be. But my hat's really off to the 12 car and that Altel team of Ryan Newman's because this was a brand new race car. So they're actually doing a little bit of combination racing, racing and testing. And they've done an excellent job of working the problems out, bugs, and making that car competitive today. And Ryan has really, you know, showed a lot of composure and a lot of patience of racing the racetrack and giving these guys a chance to work on his car where he can have a good finish today and maintain that second place in points. And Newman looking for his first Winston Cup career victory and Sterling Marlin hoping in the long haul for his first Winston Cup points championship. Let's go uh, back upstairs. Mike Joy, Larry McReynolds, and Daryl Walker. Newman is in the middle of the three rookies in the race. Shauna Robinson's car is already loaded on the truck. And let's remind you that Newman, who crashed in the last minute of practice yesterday, but because of a cut tire, not from overdriving this racetrack. Jimmy Johnson continues to impress. He's up there into eighth spot. We need to document that our pole sitter, Ricky Craven, is back in the race. 88, 88 left down. Dale Jarrett, 88 car. Ooh, last He's got problems. And I see smoke. Blew up. Blew up. And this is what happened to Jeff Gordon here last year. Gordon led a bunch of laps, but he led the first 47 of the laps, but ended up 40th in the race due to an engine. And should it be an engine failure, remember, three races ago at Rockingham, he blew up. I don't know. I just felt it start tightening up. I looked down, the oil pressure was gone. And Ben serves me right. That's the same comment we heard at Rockingham. No oil pressure. Motor started tightening up. So two out of five races. Looks like Dale Jarrett has lost an engine. Bell. Larry, another guy that had a, who came in running in the uh, top ten there a while ago when they had those round of pit stops was Rusty Wallace. And he's now back in 26th position. And I understand that they worked on the car. They put a spring rubber in somewhere. You know, like I do, if you work on that race car undergo in a on a pit stop, you're going to lose a lot of time. Yeah, I, I mean, a spring rubber is a good adjustment, but I want to try a lot of other adjustments. I can do a lot quicker than that, like wedge or track bar, things like that. It takes a long time to put a spring rubber in, and we'll kind of show you what they've done here on one of our animations. Car comes in the pits. We're going to show you what happens if you put one in the right rear. You have to jack it up just like a normal tire change. There you see the spring right there. It's the, the red thing is the spring rubber. That's pulling it out. You can pull it out a lot That's quicker. You, yeah, you need to pull them out. You don't need to be but putting, putting them in. putting it in takes a lot longer. Increases the rate of that spring probably in the rear 15, 20 pounds. And if they did do it in the right rear like we've done right here, it will make the car turn better on the exit of the corner. Stiffens that right rear corner. Now, if you do that in the front, the rear is fairly easy. But if you try to get down in there with all the shock absorbers and everything else on the front, that's when you run into a problem. And all the heat. And that's where they tried to put one, in the right front. The hope in Dale Jarrett's pit is that he just threw the oil pump belt. That's why the car lost oil pressure and the motor started to tighten, but he continues to sit in the pits with the hood up. So apparently the problem is more serious. Yeah, even if he lost the belt, when he says no pressure, he's, he, he's lost the engine. Well, these cars have an external oil pump. It's on the outside of the engine, and it has a belt that's driven off the crankshaft. And a lot of times, especially at a place like this where you have so much tire rubber, it'll get up there and it'll cake in, make that belt too tight 
and the belt will actually break. Yeah, it's a clog belt. It's got teeth on it, rubber. Rubber get, and then rubber off the tires will get up under there and knock it off the pump. Jeff Gordon works past Stacy Compton for the second time. Now, I think if you look back, you'll see how far Jimmy Spencer has fallen back. Jimmy abused his car trying to stay with Jeff. That's what I figured. I thought Jeff was probably thinking, if I can stay in front of Spencer for eight, ten laps here, I'll get away from him. In his last 13 starts here, Gordon has five wins and ten top five finishes. He's now led over a thousand laps here in his last dozen or so races. Sterling Marlin in that 40 car, he continues to march toward the front. This is a pass for third position. Started dead last after changing that engine. You got to tip your hat. They've got a good race. Well, what, what, what bothers me? I'm going to talk to Sterling. He looks like he's not working very hard in there to me. Did you notice that shot we had him? He's just kind of like, this is darling to me. He's supposed to be fighting that wheel. He was just smooth as silk. Dale Jarrett's car did. Darrell lose an oil pump belt, and it did too much damage to the internally to the engine. They're headed for the garage. Well, remember, once that oil pump stops turning, he immediately loses oil pressure. You can't hardly catch it that quick and shut the engine off without causing damage. Now, all the race cars I ever drove had a great big old red light on the dashboard. And when that oil pressure went down, that red light came on. Now, I don't know if they had that light or not, but that's how we would catch it sometimes. How about this race car right here, Tony Stewart? It wasn't too many laps ago. We were talking about him starting 36 and only gaining a couple positions. He has moved up into the ninth position, but he gained five spots on that pit stop while ago. That's what, that's what we were saying. It's a very, very timely pit stop, a very, very timely caution for a number of guys, him and his one up. How about Kurt Busch right behind him? Now that what little guy, more season he's having. Let me tell you, that little guy runs good here. Yes, he Last does. year here, he was uh, he was on pole and led a bunch of the race. You know, it was ironic. I talked to Jimmy Finning this morning. This is actually the same car they set on the pole and led a lot, a lot of that race. Jimmy, once again, a lot like Robbie Riser, Matt Kenseth's crew chief, said the setup from from the Southern 500 in in August is not working. We've had to completely change the setup. And the thing that's confusing these guys, this is the same tire combination that Goodyear ran here both races last year, so you would tend to think the setup would at least be a tunable setup. Let's get an update on uh, Dale Jarrett from Matt. Well, Mike, you were speculating about the oil pump out on Dale Jarrett's Ford. That's exactly what broke. Roy Gillian opened the hood, and this is what they found. The oil pump belt was broken in half. So that's going to end the day for Dale Jarrett. To Jeff Hamill. Jeff? Just everybody at home understands, right here is the oil pump belt on the front of our engine right here. What it does is drive this pump. It actually makes the oil circulate from down inside of the engine, back to the oil tank, back into the engine. So whenever you lose this belt, all the oil pumping system ceases to work. And when that happens, no oil can marry for too long. Engine's done. Your day is done. Mike? Thanks, Jeff. We watch Jeff Gordon. Open up a lead of 1.6 seconds now on Jimmy Spencer, Sterling Marlin, Elliot Sadler, and Wardberg. Just a little, a little more information. That's a dry sump system is what you call it. And uh, the oil is held externally outside of the engine, unlike a passenger car that has an oil pan. Did I tell that right, Larry? Absolutely. <laughs> Took the word right out of my mouth. <laughs> Kurt Busch, uh, he's all over Tony Stewart right here. This would be a battle for the eighth position. Kurt Busch in the 97 car. Yep, they passed Bill Elliott. Running right there in their tire tracks. And they're closing up on Jimmy Johnson. Now, Jimmy's been sliding back just a little bit. Dale Jr. got around Clear. him a lap or so ago. Ricky Craven, who had been running a minus front end sheet metal, takes his wounded car back to the garage. And the pole sitter will be out of the race. Jeff Burton in that 99 car. Remember, we thought he had a flat tire a while ago. He's back in 23rd position, just hanging on by his fingernails on that lead lap. <laughs> Yesterday, 18 cars fell out of the bush race, and that's a record. This track is tough. Gordon, 1.6 seconds up on Jimmy Spencer, then Sterling Marlin, Elliott Sadler, Ward Burton. Ward just passed Elliott down here in three and four. So that will change fourth place. Oh, trouble over there on the back straightaway. Who is it? It's the 19 car. Jeremy Mayfield. 
And he saves it. Well, he hit the outside wall once already. Caution is on the speedway. But he saved that from being a multi-car crash. Yeah. The 23 car got into him. You see where he got in the left rear right there. The 23 car turned him, got him up in the fence. Got people racing back here. There goes Nemechek, and ah, 30 didn't quite make it. Third caution of the day. And it comes out for Jeremy Mayfield. One Here's two, turn two. Oops. But Strickland in the 23 coming up off turn two. Almost the same thing we saw with Steve Park, but at the other end of the racetrack earlier. You know, Jeremy was leading this race here a year or two ago and had a huge lead, and the same thing happened to him off turn two over there. There's another look. And trust me, folks, these guys, they're not driving into the side of each other on purpose. It's just the <laughs> nature of this racetrack. Knowledge. You've got to know when you can put that nose up there and when you can. Around she goes. And both those drivers will have a lot more knowledge about what to do next time they come here. Maybe next time Jeremy will lift up and let 23 car go by. Maybe next time 23 car won't try to pass it. Pit road is open and busy again for four tires. Matt Yoke. Ward Burton slides to a stop. Larry Kim on the radio so the car is pushy loose. They're going to make a wedge adjustment. Then they call back so let's go the other way on the wedge. So this will be a four tire change. Let's go up pit road. Well, Matt, Jimmy Spencer's in. They're not going to make any chassis adjustments in this number 41 Dodge. He said, I won't work the tires as hard on this run. Darren Wolf is the front tire changer. Mark Olson on the rear tires. It's Spencer Services done to Dick Bergeron. Gordon is in the midst of a four tire change on car number 24. This car is so good, they are going to replace the tires with the same air pressure they had. No adjustment. He will be first out of pit road again. Ward Burton, boy, he gets an attaboy. If Burton hadn't lifted to allow Spencer to come up into that outside lane, they would have collected Sterling Marlin as Marlin came out of his pit, and Marlin and Spencer would both be done. So there's my hero of the moment right there. <laughs> that just averted disaster. It is so hard trying to get off this pit road, maintain the speed limit, get out of your pit, get in line in a hurry. Close quarters here at Darlington. Where it's won and lost right here. I know it's early in the race. Jeff Gordon at 24 punts. That's what they're supposed to do. But look at this group right here. Comes in six, go out second. That just makes that driver feel so good to know his crew did that for him. Yeah, he's pretty good on new tires. I mean, he runs like crazy for about 10, 15 laps. And he starts to slide back. But uh, he's going to give Jeff Gordon a run for his money right now. Tony Stewart right there. That's another one. They did their job. Comes in ninth, seventh. Those guys have been picking him up positions all day long. The pits is we're ready to go green. Third caution period of the day cleaned up. Ready and green, green, green. Mike Skinner's going to try to race George, uh, Gordon down in there, but he let him go. Slid up. Eh, he's going to give Gordon, he's going to give uh, Junior some room there. Well, Elliot Satter's got a run. Almost got in the back of Spencer there. I think that's uh, the four car kind of caused him to break his momentum a little bit and gave Elliott a run on him. Jimmy Spencer jumped up back in the gas. Looked like he had to get on the brake in the middle of the corner to keep from hitting Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now, on the last restart, Spencer ran the first 10 or 12 laps really hard trying to take the lead from Jeff Gordon. And then he slid back a bit. Let's see how Spencer works on this restart. Boy, Gordon must have a whale of a car today, guys, because he just drove. Look at that. In one lap, he just drove off and left everybody. Jimmy Spencer doing what he's done right after every pit stop, right down on the bottom of that racetrack. But, Darrell, that, that, I think that abuses those oh. tires down there digging on the bottom. Well, and it bogs the car down so badly. You come up off that corner where the wheels turn hard left, and he just kills the horsepower. Watch 99, Jeff Burton, and 23, Hutt Strickland on this restart. Pow! Wow, that was on the restart. Jeff Burton trying to get up to the top of the racetrack because that's where you need to enter turn one. Had bad timing. <laughs> yes. All right, Gordon leads by 1.2 seconds. He's opened up a big lead in a hurry, Matt. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to hold on to that second position. And Tony Urey Jr. is cussing at car chief. You guys have battled your way into this, Tony. Yeah, we're having a pretty good day today. Uh, Junior's really driving a nice race. We made a couple of 
bug chassis just was last night. We thought would help out, and uh, car's just a little bit off of what Gordon is right now. We just told Dale Jr. to, we ain't never been in his position here, so we just told him to run his race, and we'll see if we can come out with a top five. Remember, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has never scored a top ten finish in a Winston Cup car here in Darlington. Well, that Jimmy uh, Spencer by. likes his race car. They made no chassis adjustments on the last stop. They did go a half pound down all the way around on the tires. Jimmy likes the balance of the car. He said, I'm trying not to make any mistakes. I'm having just a little bit of a porpoise effect in turn two. Dick Bergeron. In 1996, Elliot Sadler came to NASCAR's big league in the Bush Series. He had a volunteer crew, one car, one motor. Today, he is a legitimate contender with a shot to win here at Darlington. The car was loose everywhere on the speedway. He radioed in and told the crew, do what you need to do. They changed the track bar. They shut him out fourth. He had come in fifth. Have a good day. And Darrell, what they did to Jimmy Spencer, I know a half a pound of air don't sound like much, but the softer you can get the spring rate of the car here, the better it's going to grip the racetrack where you can't change springs, but as you take air pressure out of those tires, that softens the spring rate. What you want to do, you don't want to take so much air out that the car really worms around on low air pressure when, right after a pit stop on the on start of a green flag run. Well, I think at a half pound tells you what a fine line you're walking between being really, really good are going all the way out, out of the ballpark. Jimmy Spencer's lap times right now identical to Jeff Gordon's. But Gordon scooted away on that restart and built up a 1.7 second lead. Guess what? If Jimmy Spencer speeds up, Jeff Gordon will speed up. He seems to have it. He just seems to have it going that way today. Gordon's owner, Rick Hendrick, with seven victories here at Darlington. Among active owners, trails only the Wood Brothers and Richard Childress, who've each won here eight times. We look at our Fox tracks here. This is the interval between Jimmy Spencer and second. Jeff Gordon leading the race right now, holding it about 1.9 seconds. That pretty much backs up that they're running the same lap times right now, about a 38. Pretty even all the way around the racetrack. Right in there, 1.9. Yeah, and, and those times will fall off as they go along here. Pretty soon they'll be running 32.80. So we drop off about two seconds in the period of a run. Actually, that lap, Jeff Gordon ran 30.77, Spencer run 30.90, about a tenth and a half difference. And you know, down there in the garage or, or in the pits, you don't see that so much, but standing up here, boy, you see two tenths in a hurry. I tell you, the guy that just keeps marching on started back in 36th position, Tony Stewart. There he is in that 20 car. These guys keep picking him up positions on pit road, but he's got a good race car, Matt Yoakum. Well, he certainly does, Larry, and especially to make it all the way back in 36. Two stops ago, they made an air pressure adjustment and a track bar adjustment to help with the forward bite, and it has helped. Tony reported in, though, that after that lap 91 pit stop at lap 127, it started to give up. So they made a wedge adjustment on this last stop. Tony told me on Friday that he's won a Daytona in a Budweiser shootout. He won a 500-lap at Bristol the night race, but he would love to have a Darlington victory on his racing resume. This is a special place for drivers. Now, forward bite's not something that your dentist can fix for you. What that is is when you go to put the throttle down, the rear wheel will hook up, and you have to keep pedaling that throttle pedal until you can get that forward bite or the car gets grip up off the corner with the rear tire. Jerry Nadeau and Mark Martin. Mark Martin, you know, he came in here fourth in points. He has three top tens this year. You know, he's just quietly back there doing his job right now. But you know what? Mark Martin pretty much owned this place in the Bush oh. Series, won eight races here, and he's all the way up to 15th position after starting in 31st. All right, we've just taken the crossed flags, which indicate halfway in the Carolina Dodge Dealers 400. Here's our Coors Light halfway recap. Ricky Craven started out on the pole, but got swept up in a wreck when Steve Park crashed while trying to lap Stacy Compton. Jeff Gordon took over the lead and has led every lap since. So we're at lap 149, just past the halfway point. Got a car coming down pit road, looks like a 30 car is back in. Jeff Green. Having a pretty good go of it there for a while, but something's happened to his car because he's made a couple of unscheduled stops. See a routine four-tire change. Matt Yoko. Well, Larry, the problem for the 30 team, two stops ago when he pitted, he left, he lost five spots on pit road, but then the problem really started in. He said, I've got a vibration. He finally had to come back in. They found out they had loose lugs on the left rear, and that has just started the problems for Jeff Green. Now they've got some other 
other problems. They're looking at the studs. They're going to replace a stud. But boy, a tough, tough day for Jeff Green. And what, the, with the loose lug nuts, it probably just wallowed the threads off of one of the lug studs. And NASCAR says you have to have five lug nuts, which means you'd have to have five good lug studs. Jeff Gordon's lead over Jimmy Spencer now, 2.3 seconds. <laughs> You're at Darlington watching NASCAR on Fox. Tonight on Fox Sports Net, you're going to go all access with Johnny Benson on NASCAR Victory Lane. And then next weekend, we go to Thunder Valley, Bristol, Tennessee. Well, the and then Bristol are Friday. sharp as a pistol when they do the Bristol stomp. The Bush Series and Winston Cup practice on FX Saturday. And then next Sunday, it's a full day of NASCAR on the Fox Networks. NASCAR this morning. NASCAR Winston Cup racing presented by UPS here on Fox. And the NASCAR Victory Lane all access again next Sunday night from Bristol. I get all the drivers lined up on the front straightway at Bristol do the Bristol stomp. Jeff Gordon. We're going to give you pro seconds. <laughs> <laughs> seconds. Next week, boys, I'll tell you, you'll have to hold my hand. I'll be a little edgy. Jimmy Spencer, Earnhardt Jr., Sadler, and Marlin are your top five. Two Chevys, a Ford, and two Dodges. This is one of those, oh, by the way, oh, by the way, Jeff Gordon's leading the race. I don't know where he is. He done left everybody behind. Darrell, I believe Jimmy Spencer learned a lesson this time before this. I, you know, he knows he overdrove that race car and abused those tires, and he settled down a little bit. Started looking look like he wanted to do it there at the beginning of this run, but kind of settled down. Sterling Marlin up to fifth. He passed Ward Burton. Here's a look at it. A couple of Dodges racing each other. Now, that's smart Darlington racing right there. Sterling's faster. Ward lifted on the straightaway. That Sterling go. Cannot run side by side. You can, but you're going to be two seconds Well, you, you see the smart guys. They do it all day long. They lift on the straightaway, let you pass them before you get to the corner. Jimmy Spencer riding second. Let's go down to his pick, Steve. Mike, the crew chief, Doug Randolph. Doug, is there any adjustment you can make to this car in the closing part of it to catch that 24? Well, this target Dodge is running really good today. Gordon's off the top. We're making some slight adjustments, trying to make the car last for a long run. There's a lot of races left. We might have some for him at the end. David Bryant, he was leading Rockingham Speedway at the back of a gurney. A front tire carrier for car number 48. He was struck on pit road, broke his ankle, broke his leg. How are you doing, bud? Uh, doing pretty good. A whole lot better a couple weeks ago. Just like to thank everybody at Hendrick Motorsports and Lowe's and especially all the fans for the support. Uh, glad to see you back. Come at him. I think Ward Burton has dropped a six, and DW is talking about how he let the 40 car go. Reason being, Ward came on the radius of the car just will not turn in the center of the corner. Whatever you did on the last stop, put it back. Let's pick up the third place battle. Just ahead of Ward, Bernhardt Jr. with Elliott Sadler and Sterling Marlin is there. I mean, I've been watching the monitor, 3157. That's what Sterling's been running. That's about three-tenths quicker than Jeff Gordon's out there running, leading this thing. But you know what, no, Larry? I, I, the thing about Gordon's car is it's good on the restarts, it's good on the short run, and it's also very, very good on the long run. So he's got the best of both worlds right now. Whoa. Yeah. These yeah. other guys seem to be backs and forth. Here comes Jeff Green. Remember, he's on fresh tires after that unscheduled green flag pit stop. No substitute for fresh tires. They lost about six additional laps under Green changing those lug studs. There is the gap, Sterling Marlin to our leader, Jeff Gordon. Pretty constant right there at four and a half seconds. That's coming down a few hundreds here and there. Well, I always like to use the start finish line as my point of reference. Now here comes Jeff off of turn four. He's at the start finish line now, and Sterling's coming off of turn four now. So that's how far behind Sterling is. That's, that's how you let the driver know. That's how you let the driver he know the what's going on. Leaders at the line now, and then the driver knows where he is, because a couple, three seconds doesn't mean a whole lot to a race car driver, except he's slow. <laughs> Tell Jimmy Spencer, Earnhardt Jr.'s there now. Exactly. <laughs> right now. Yeah, don't look back, but. <laughs> and Jr.'s car has gotten better. Uh, they've done some, uh, made some good adjustments on that car, because he was sliding back no, after several laps. He looks like a little more consistent. Low. Here comes a 40 car. He's just going by Spencer. 
Fincher, uh, I believe, let him go by. And Junior tucked in behind Jeff Green, who's on those four and fresh tires. You know, Elliot Sadler's going to go by Spencer. I guess Spencer's going to fall to the back of this pack and ride a little bit. And just remember, Sterling Marlin's Jimmy Spencer's teammate. The last thing Jimmy wants to do is hold up his teammate Sterling if he's that much faster than he is. Now, Gordon is going to start catching up to the back of some of these, uh, some, the field, actually. And he's going to have to start working traffic. That could play into the hands of these guys running second, third, and fourth. Because even when you got a good race car here, you don't just drive by people. Now, Darrell, we saw Junior go into that turn and tuck the left front down on the flat on purpose. Not because there was another car there. He just drove it down and then slid up. Well, there's a little grip down there for you. And plus, you get that left front fender. If you're following somebody, you want that left front fender down there in clean air. But mainly, you want that left front tire down there digging on that flat. If you can get a little bit of air on that left front corner, that helps the front downforce and help that thing to turn when you're following someone when you've lost all your front downforce. Sterling Marlin started last after an engine change following yesterday's final practice. He has marched his way into the front three. It's Jeff Gordon by 4.4 seconds over Dale Earnhardt Jr., then Marlin, Sadler, and Spencer. Longer, and here's why there's been quite a skirmish for second place. Junior loose, he is lacking forward bite. Just, he gets to pushing off that corner. Driver turns the wheels to the left, and all of a sudden, the front end digs in, and the back end comes around. And we heard Ward Burton talk earlier about his car being pushy loose. That's exactly what he's talking about. You go in the corner, it won't turn in the middle. Finally, you slow the speed of the car down enough, the front wheels bite, but the rear wheels break loose. Exactly. So Sterling Marlin moves to second, and Elliott Sadler follows him through to third place. And one of the reasons that Jeff extended his lead a little bit was that uh, Sterling had to pass that 14 car, and it cost him almost a second. Mm. He slowed down from a 31.7 to a 32.5 in that one lap. So Earnhardt Jr. falls to fourth. Spencer is fifth. Ward Burton, Jimmy Johnson, Tony Stewart, Kevin Harvick, and Kurt Busch, the top ten. Car's pretty well strung out all the way around the speedway right now. Not a whole lot of racing going on. Everybody's doing what we said, racing the track right now. Marlin holding about 4.6 seconds off the lead. And the thing is, you don't know about the front four or five guys, just how hard are they running? How hard is Jeff Gordon running right now? And how hard is Sterling running trying to catch him? Uh, this is a point in the race where you just, what I like to call logging laps, because you want to get some laps in the books, get down near the end of this thing, then make your plays. Well, driver's having a pretty good day is Buckshot Jones. He's the only one of the three petty cars currently running on the lead lap. Been running in the top 20 most of the day, had a 12th in Atlanta, but he's going to pick up his best career finish here today. Yeah, his best friend was that caution flag a little earlier in the race. He was just about to get lapped on both cautions when the, when the caution came out. He was just about to get lapped by the leader. Tony Stewart against Jimmy Johnson, who just... But Jimmy, again, Daryl just pulled over in the straightaway and let him go. Well, if, if you've been racing here very long, and Jimmy Johnson hadn't, but uh, you know that you pull down on the straightaway or back off on the straightaway and let the guy that's faster than you by so you don't race into the corner side by side because that's a disaster. That's an ingredient for disaster when you race in the corner side by side here. Just like we saw what happened to Park first in the race. Okay, I'm going to have to go down to the hotel and get my crew chief buddy in on this conversation because this race looks like it has a little bit of a green flag flavor to it now. But the, Jeff, the guys were on pit road at 133, lap 133, which is 160 laps to go. That's shy of being able to do it on, on one stop. So my question to you would be now, and then I'll follow up, are you going to try to just break it up into about three 53 or 54 lap runs? Or are you going to run your 65 laps and go ahead and pit with maybe 30 to go? Some of that's going to depend on how good my car is and the other is how good my crew is. I see it as being a three-stop race if it happens to stay green. The key to this whole deal is who is going to pull the trigger first. The guy that comes to pit road first could dictate so much. Lap times have held on really good and been a lot more consistent with the top cars than early on. 
because my car, I'm looking to break it down about 55 laps and come on, get me some tires. And the one guy that cannot make that commitment and do it is our leader, Jeff Gordon. He has to wait till some of the other guys in the top five commit because when you make a green flag stop here, 45 miles an hour, you're going to lose almost two laps. You're right about that, Larry. And what we just saw there with Jimmy Spencer's car starting to get loose is a good indicator <laughs> just that these that. tires are getting ready to go away. And you can't sit out there and slide around all day long because you're going to get lapped when you do come down pit road really bad. Now, this place is real bad about wearing out your right rear tire. And that's, man, when that baby goes, you'll see what it looks like. Because I think that's about where Spencer is. I almost shouted, but this is about the 50th time today somebody started to wreck and just not finished it. Control. That was a controlled slide, right? say? When you don't hit the wall, that's a control slide, slide, right, Larry? Now, here's a guy that I think we got to give a hat of to. The whole crowd, Ryan Newman's crowd. He is up to 14th place, started dead last in a car that never seen the racetrack at Darlington. Now, there's not a lot of people that can pull that little feet off. And, you know, he crawled in a backup car last year at Kansas after wrecking in practice and finished second. But I reminded his crew chief, Matt Boylan, that's a car he had been on the racetrack with before. Yeah, I mean, th this car hadn't even seen the racetrack. They didn't want to come out of the truck when they told us at Darlington. Mort Burton saw Jimmy Spencer get sideways, and now he pounces on Spencer. This is for fifth position. And Darrell, it almost looks like Ward Burton's car is good on those long, long runs. runs. Yeah. Well, that's going to be interesting strategy. If Burton's car is good on long runs, and his crew chief is Tommy Baldwin, the king of short pitting, what will they do? We'll find out in a minute. To Darlington, South Carolina, the lady in black, tough on Steve Park and Ricky Craven, as well as Robbie Gordon. Craven, the pole sitter, gave it another try, but forced out of this one. The pole sitter has won this race just once in the last 17 tries. And Jeff Gordon, who started on the front row, your current leader. Let's look at the Dodge race summary after 185 laps. Three leaders, just two lead changes. And you see that uh, 25 cars on the lead lap. And Jeff Gordon, who has uh, led just 19 laps in his first four races this season, took over on lap 38 and has not let go. Jeff Hamlin with me in the Hollywood Hotel. And, uh, Jeff, if we look at yesterday, Jeff Burton led all 147 laps of the Bush Series race from start to finish. And with uh, just about 105 laps to go here, Jeff Gordon certainly could do that. What has to happen for somebody to catch him? To me, when you look at Jeff Gordon, you talk about what Jeff Burton did on Saturday. He's in a zone. I'm telling you right now, every now and then a driver will get in that zone. He gets the rhythm going, and you just, you just can't break it. I mean, it's so hard to overcome that. That kind of trickles down to the crew. They're doing a great job, and everything's just falling in place and getting the job done. Darrell Walter, I've seen you in that zone. And Larry McCrimmons, I'm sure you've worked with drivers before who've been in that zone. Yeah, at a place that's as tough as this is, uh, you, you've really got to focus and concentrate hard. And uh, when your car's there for you, you can really make everybody else look like they're going to kindergarten. Tony Stewart started 36th, moves up past Jimmy Spencer into sixth place. He's in the zone. His car's working for him as well. Yeah, they have been for every race so far this year. It's unfortunate they had trouble at Daytona because I believe you'd be looking at the point leader if it wasn't for that. Well, what did we say about him last September? Started uh, back in the 30s and finished fourth. Yeah, but at the, about middle ways last year, this team really came into its own. They matured, started getting great runs, great finishes, winning races, and uh, they have not let up. And we're starting to see a few green flag stops. Joe Nemechek in the 26, Brett Bodine in the 11, John Andretti. These are guys that were about to go a lap down or was a lap down. They're trying to get that jump on those four fresh tires, see if they can get back on that lead lap. Well, Nick Berger. Well, Elliot Sadler right now is running in third spot, and he's just heard some good words on his radio that he's running as fast as a leader. Pat Tryson, crew chief, how long are you to stay out? Well, the boat craft quality parts been getting pretty good gas lines. We could probably go at about 210, but I don't think we'll go that far. It depends when all the leaders come. You don't want to be out there in old tires when they got new ones. So it's getting somewhere around 195 when everybody's going to come. Uh, that's about the number that Jeff Gordon is talking about as well, around lap 195. We talked about Ward Burton's crew chief, Tommy Ball, being the king of short pitting, meaning not running out the full tank of fuel, but coming in early to get fresher tires to put on to get lower lap times to make everybody else then come in sooner than they wanted to. And another downside of staying out there on where a lot of other cars has come to pit road is they're out there on fresh tires. They're catching you at such a fast rate, you can't get out of the way quick enough. 
I think Johnny Benson brushed the wall and uh, he's coming pit side. Don't look like no tire rubs or anything. It's just a little flat. All right, here we are. Don't spend a lot of time. Come on, come on, come on. Four tires. Well, flat being the sheet metal, not the tires, but time to come in. Yeah, and what he's saying is don't spend a lot of time. Hey, we're not going to a show here. We're racing. Now just get the tires on and get out. So Benson fouls from the lead lap, and now Ricky Rudd goes a lap down to the charge of Jeff Gordon. Ricky's in the 24th position, so we have 23 cars on the lead lap. The next one's that car right up there in front. The guy that led every lap yesterday, Jeff Burton, in that 99 car. His troubles continue. How about it, Matt? Is the king of short pitting polishing his crown down there? Oh, well, Mike, you remember back in Tommy Baldwin's modified days, he was nicknamed Two Tire Tommy for always taking on two, and I doubt he'll take two anytime today. Tommy, when are you going to come back in for four tires? Well, uh, the car's a little tight, uh, which making it loose off the corners and hurting the right rear tire, but uh, we're going to be coming in about 10 more laps and uh, make some adjustments to it. Uh, I went the wrong way in the last stop. Let's see what happens. They're still lacking forward by currently Ward Burton in the fourth position. If he comes in in 10 laps, Larry, that would leave him 89 laps to run. That would be too far. That would be too far. Everybody should have to make two more stops. You know, there are five, four cars officially out of this Here race. The they have not marked Steve Park as officially out of the race. Here. He's coming back in as Jeff Gordon comes to pit road. And trust me, the other guys cannot be far behind him. He's coming in right behind him. So here come a bunch of cars. That's what Pat Tryson said. They do what the leader did. And so here they come. This is under green, green flag pit stop. And here comes the 17. Here comes the 40. They're all coming now. When Gordon comes, they all come. And this pit road, it goes all the way from over the middle of turn four, all the way to down into turn one. Dick Burton. Well, as soon as Jeff Burton's guys jumped on the wall, Tryson and his guys jumped on the wall, and that's what started it. All the way down pit road, people got ready to pit. Jeff Burton indeed set the tone for these pit stops. Car has been excellent all day long. No wrenches in the back of this automobile. They're on the rear tires already. Johnny LeClerc got it on. There they go. 21 also in. Elliot Sadler in for his pit stop. A little bit slower than Gordon. Not the best pit stop of the day that they have had. Steve. Well, Nick Sterling Marlin comes to the attention of his crew. They have not called for any chassis adjustments. Clay Robinson on the front tires. Nate Cannon on the rear. A new rear tire carrier this week. Wayne Trammell, as Kenneth comes to the rear tires, Rick Reeling is the jack man, Jerry Schweitz the gas man, no chassis adjustment for Sterling Marlin. Oh, trouble, turn, turn, turn four down here, trouble. Kurt Busch has crashed at turn three, and now spinning his hut Strickland, and another car in the wall. Matt. And Mike, the 22 car is already on pit road, they went back at their wedge adjustment, as they look up and see the 11 car go smoking by, they're telling Tommy Baldwin about the caution. Nothing he could do. The car was already jacked up and the lug nuts off. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you might as well go ahead and complete the stop. Mark Martin's leading the race, and so he hadn't pitted yet, so it's going to put some guys that have uh, put some, some guys in trouble. Oh, what a difference a caution flag yeah, at the, you know, Sadly, it's they fall at the, They fall at the right time, and sometimes they fall at the wrong time. That was untimely. The circuit's sole remaining driver owner, Brett Bodine, is involved in that crash. We saw Kurt Busch go spinning as well up at turn number three. I think the top four or five cars that were that were leading the race here before that happened, uh, Spencer, Gordon, a couple of others, Sterling, I think they were ahead of Mark Martin, so they're going to be okay. And cars that hadn't pitted, Mark Martin, Bobby Labonte, and Tony Stewart, his teammate, Bobby Labonte's teammate. And Kurt Busch was the other one. Yeah, Kurt Busch was one of those. Let's see if we can see what happened here. Pick it up there in progress as Busch went spinning back down to the track apron, and there Bodine tags Hut Strickland, who had checked up. Daryl, I'm not a big speculator. This is one of the worst places in the world coming on the pit road. I just wonder if Kurt Busch was trying to get on the pit oh. road and that entrance snuck up on him. Yeah, there wasn't any problem. He spun the car around. What the problem was is a spotter or somebody hollered those other guys. They ran over each other. They lifted and ran over each other. See, he has no damage. He just spun coming on trying to get on pit road. And his caution flag put a lot of cars down. He's still on the lead lap in fourth. Where's that <laughs> shamrock now that I need it, you know? At the time of the caution flag, the pace car picked up the leading driver who had not yet pitted. You see him at the top of your screen, Mark Martin. First time he's led this year, along with Bobby Labonte and Kurt Busch. Now, because the pace car picked up Mark Martin, the drivers who had pitted had to fall in line behind him. So now that Mark has gone to pit road, 
he'll come back out and several of those drivers are still behind the pace car but they'll be ahead of the race leader on the tail end of the lead lap and they include Dale Earnhardt Jr., Elliott Sadler, Michael Waltrip, Bill Elliott. Yeah, he'll be leading the race, but he's going to restart this race at about 13th or 14th position. <laughs> and we're going to have some fun, fun, fun now, boys. Oh, yeah. taken a toll here. Four cars officially out. 18 cars yesterday in the Bush race here in Darlington. That was a record. The one car, remember it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And the one car was Steve Park, which went out on lap 38. Steve Park making his return here after a six-month absence. Uh, Darlington is back, coming back on the track. 158 laps down, and there is Steve Park. So at least wants to finish his uh, comeback in this race. We're under our fourth caution. Jeff Gordon, our leader, and we're getting ready for a restart that could be a real advantage adventure here. <laughs> it's going to be an adventure. I can guarantee you that right now. We've got Jeff Gordon leading this thing, followed by Sterling Marlin, but we've also got about 10 cars that are in front of them. Because of that caution flag, guys, who made pit stops, they're on the tail end of the lead lap. They're trying to stay ahead of Jeff Gordon. Believe you me, when this thing goes back green, it's going to be exciting. And Jeff Gordon, the uh, off-the-track distraction, and also trying to end a streak of 12 straight races in which he has not finished in the top five. His last win was Kansas uh, last September. Now, let's check in now with our Matt Yoakum down on the track. Matt? Well, Chris, I'm down here in the 20 pit, and Greg Zipinelli, you were talking about a track bar adjustment. What'd you guys do to the 20? Uh, we just went uh, up a little in the left rear, down a little in the right rear pressure, and uh, up a half round, about an eighth of an inch in a track bar. We're kind of fighting just a little tight end. But I can't give up any forward bite on the exit, so uh, we'll just keep working on it. Home Depot Pontiac running good. Guys in the pits have been awesome all day. Got us up in the top five here, and uh, hopefully we can finish it off here. Now, the 22 got caught when the caution came out on pit road. They had to come back in. How close were you guys to pitting? Uh, we were a couple cars behind them. We were kind of debating whether to try and get five laps, uh, five points. Everybody else had come. We didn't want to give up that much on sicker, so we came, but we just kind of exited back through pit road here, and it kind of worked out for us. Kept us on the lead lap early in the fifth position. Steve? Well, Matt, with Lee McCall, crew chief for Sterling Marlin. Lee, you've done a great job coming from the rear of the field, but now the question is, can you get to that 24 and pass him? Uh, the, the 24 car, he's always good here. You know, uh, what we got to do is keep racing this whole racetrack, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can battle those guys at the end. But uh, Coors Light Dodge has uh, run uh, flawless all day, and Sterling's uh, done a great job for us. So, Again, we'll just keep racing the racetrack and uh, Dance, just be there at the end. All right, thanks, Lee. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Strange times for five-time Darlington winner Bill Elliott. He had just committed the pit area. They were in the process of their pit stop when that caution flag came out. They took right side tires only, went back out on the speedway, rotated around the racetrack a few times, came back in and took the left side tires. The result, he is now running in 20th spot. Chris? All right, Jeff Gordon tied with uh, four drivers for third with five wins all time here at Darlington, hoping to make it six. We'll be back live getting ready for the restart in just a moment. Lap and a half for the restart. Now remember the last time Jeff Gordon and Sterling Marlin restarted nose to tail. Watch what happens down in the lower right corner of your screen. This is what happened at Daytona in the 500. Marlin and Gordon get together. And you'll hear Jeff's explanation oh, of it to his fault. team. I mean, Sterling hung back so much there that, uh, I mean, you know, he, I just... And then we had Fender Gate and we had was history. Time. Ward Burton won the Daytona 500. Now, go figure this out. I mean, they're first and second back there, but they're 10 cars back. You're uh, Dale Jr. Hey, you're leading the race, but you're not leading the race. You're not the race leader, but you'll be first out on the restart. So uh, he had this conversation with his crew. Yeah, Elliot wants to know if you were going to pick the high line or the low line. Which one you want? Tell him I'm going in the corner first. Just tell him in. Yeah, all right. Tell him in. Take the high line, then you'll control the start of the race. 
inside line don't control the start of the race. You have a hard time telling Elliot that, Tony. I get up to high line and I'll beat him down in the corner. He'll be out. Now these cars are on the tail end of the lead lap. <laughs> There's a spotter Ty Norris. <laughs> I'm just a messenger. Don't shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> when the caution came out, the pace car picked up Mark Martin as the leader. Everyone else who had already pitted fell in line behind. Then when Martin pitted, under caution, everyone else could pull up to the pace car. But they couldn't come all the way around. That's why these cars are trapped on the tail end of the lead lap behind the pace car. It's going to get interesting here in a minute. on the tail end of the lead lap behind the pace car. They will get the green flag first. Fox Tracks points out where the leader, Jeff Gordon, will be on this restart. 13th in line, but he's the race leader. And got to be careful. Got a really good race car, obviously. You just got to not get in trouble here. But, Daryl, it's going to be interesting to watch Jeff Gordon in that 24 car because he's been at the front all day. He's been in clean air. Now he's back there in traffic. Let's see how good he really is. Yeah, because I've, I've talked to him about that, and he said that's one of his biggest problems. When they get loose track position, Hart gets that arrow. I said, we're going to say it. I'm saying once, dreaded arrow push. Loses that front down force, won't turn near as good. And all those cars in front of him want desperately to stay on the lead lap because now if a caution flag comes out, they'll come all the way around, get the free pass. This is when they'll be start hauling. I see something on the racetrack. I see debris yeah. down here. <laughs> well, so far, so good. They get single file in a hurry, and that's, that's good news for him. Tony Stewart on the move in third. Challenging Sterling Marlin for second. They just don't want Gordon to get away from them here. Get some lap cars between them and the, between Sterling and the Tony. Hard to make up that distance. They're banking on those uh, lap cars holding him up. Every time it's Gordon goes by one of these cars in front of him now, he's putting them a lap down. Here are the cars on the tail end of the lead lap out in front of Jeff Gordon. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in ninth, Elliot Sadler, Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson, Bobby Hamilton, Matt Kenseth, Ryan Newman, Jerry Nadeau. Those cars are out in front of Gordon on the tail end and, of the lead lap. And Larry, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. He's he got behind uh, the car. The car was there in front of him, uh, Burton, and the car wouldn't turn. It pushed up off of turn four, and Rusty went back by him. So he's got to have that clean air to go. Look at him. He has to slow down off of two there. He had to lift out of the throttle. Here comes come Stewart. Got inside of Marlin and Bill Elliott up in the high lane. Stewart Tony came to second. The bottom of the racetrack working for Tony now, and he can go. And Jeff Gordon is not going just as we anticipated. He's having trouble in, in, in the, with those lap cars. Larry, nobody's saying save those tires now. Now you've got to go. You have to go if you're one of those cars up there and want that caution flag. And, and this is when the spotter and the, and the crew team, everybody's got to really be on their toes. And you got to tell Jeff, don't get frustrated. The thing will come around to you. Just don't get frustrated. Make a mistake. Look at our interval right here. You kept seeing it getting smaller and smaller. Now, Rusty has passed him twice. That's the second time Rusty's got back around him. Gordon passed him back down here one and two. Tony Stewart is right there. Wallace is 19th, and that puts him on the tail end of the lead lap. He's been on and off the lead lap about three times now in the last few laps. Yeah, since the restart. Yeah. More than the 24, he's moved to the bottom of the racetrack. He saw how good it was working exactly. for Tony Stewart. And there again, the spotter, the crew chief, everybody's got to say, Stewart's on that bottom. Got to take a look at it. Last lap, though, Jeff Gordon ran a 3107. Stewart ran a 3095, over a tenth faster. Cars are pretty equal. It all depends on what line you decide to run. I believe Tony's going to try to dive under Gordon here. No, he's they're sliding up the hill. It's almost like uh, Gordon is looking in his mirror and kind of blocking his line. He does not want Gordon to get in front of, or uh, Stewart to get in front of him. You know, Dale Jr. and Elliott Sadler did a good job of getting out in front of everybody. There's a lot of clean air in front of them. And should the caution come out, I'd say at least seven or eight of these cars are going to be able to get the free pass around and stay on the lead lap. Boy, I tell you, Gordon's car is tight up off of two over there, Larry. He shoves out. He has a lift. Tony gets a heck of a run on him. 
I mean, right now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And here, he here he comes. Here he comes. He's going to come to the bottom. Six races at Darlington. Stewart has never uh, led a lap here. He's always finished on the lead lap. Right. Always, but never led a lap. Just got to be real cautious. Boy, what a run he's had since that last place finish at Daytona. Lost the engine. Now, let's, let's watch off of two over here. This is where he's been catching him. There's Tony's uh, handy little helper there in the back window. And you see he gets a run off of two every time. He's, he's got, got him. He's he, got him this time. He's got trapped right behind that lap car right there. He's going to try to slide right up in front of him. Can he make it? Nope. Needed some more room. Almost put the slide job on him, but he's got the position going into turn one. Sterling Marlin's done caught this group right now. He's in third position in the 40 car. Tony Stewart's march through the field today has been pretty unbelievable. He started the 36th today. And now comes to the lead with 74 laps to go. In the first 50, 60 laps, didn't go anywhere. Moved up two positions. And Sterling Marlin had to start last or near last because of the engine change. And he, too, is at a long climb through the field. This is a racetrack where you don't get in a hurry. You don't, you don't race hard until you get down to the last fourth of the race. It's no longer here shortly racing the racetrack. No, huh? You start racing the competition, which it, it spins itself out, and you know who it is, you know who you got to beat. Look at that. 90% of the races at Darlington have been won from the top 10. Here's two fellows out front that started way, way back. And right now, Tony Stewart is four-tenths of a lap faster than Jeff Gordon because he's back there having to contend with Bobby Hamilton a lap car. I think, I think Gordon's car is still... I don't know if he's as good as uh, Stewart is right now, but Gordon's car will get better as it goes along. He's just a little tight on new tires, it looks like. But he has got a rear-view mirror full of Sterling Marlin in that 40 car. That's been the three best cars right here at the front right now, the 20, the 24, and the 40. Now, Marlin wins this. They're going to need an asterisk for the record book because he will be credited with the starting position where he qualified. They don't take into account whether you have to go to the backup, uh, backup car and start at the rear of the field. So Marlin officially is credited with starting this race 11th, even though he took the green flag in the back. You know, the fellow who brought out that caution, Kurt Busch, who spun in turn three, was able to stay on the lead lap and continue. He's the sixth place car. You sure his name isn't Mac Bush? <laughs> He's o definitely Bush. the one that called all this Conferno Bush. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there's a little bit of green riding with Kurt Bush today. And Mark Martin. Hey, seventh Mike. place, right behind uh, his young teammate. Mike, I want to wish my neighbor, uh, Brad Tolley, a uh, good luck. He's going in the Air Force next week and uh, serve our country like so many young men are right now. I just want to wish him good luck. And good luck to all of our, uh, all of our troops that are overseas fighting for our freedom. And the guy that restarted this race, leading it, not leading it, but leading the pack, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he's 10 and a half seconds out there in front of Tony Stewart leading this race, but he's where Jeff Gordon was all day long, clean air. He's out there giving that field the goodbye look. But he, he and Elliot Sadler. Caution. All these guys would love to see a caution. He and Elliot Sadler, Harvick, Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Newman, Matt Kenseth, they would all benefit from a caution right now. But we're under green at Darlington. A ferocious, a ferocious crash in the back straightaway off turn number two. Tony Stewart, the leader around. Mark Martin's in it. Ward Burton's in it. One car got completely sideways and the track was blocked. Look at the damage to Schrader's car. He is climbing out. His teammate Johnny Benson is involved. Kurt Busch, you see his damaged car. And the leader, Stewart, caught up in it. Mark Martin in uh 24 cars got damage on the right side. I don't know how bad it is. I don't think it's real bad, but he scraped along the side of Tony Stewart. Dave Blaney and Ward Burton are the other cars involved. Jeff Gordon, I believe he got a little right side damage yeah. as he drove through he did. there. He got into the back side of Stewart's, but it didn't look that bad. But he did get through. I don't think he hurt his cars cosmetically. That's about it. I think he can fix it. I think Tony must be hurt, uh, and I feel so sorry for Kenny Schrader. I hope Tony's all right. Stewart's car got sideways, Daryl, and I believe he got hit hard in the left side. Yeah, they're uh, when they're one car gets sideways here, this track gets so narrow. 
there's nowhere for anyone to go. Damage to Buckshot Jones. I think he actually was involved in something that started all this off turn two. Yeah, old Bush has gone to the garage now, by the way. And all those cars that were on the tail end of the lead lap do get the free pass around. Well, the 24 up the behind 40, the pace uh, car. Little damage on the right front of the 24, but not very much. Of the lead lap cars, about the only two cars that was not involved is the 24 and the 40, and we're hearing that Jeff Gordon may have a little bit of damage. Yeah, he's got a little bit, but not very much. He's okay. Dick Bergman. He definitely has got some damage. They've been talking on the radio about it. The most important thing they want to do is to clear the fender so that there's no chance of that fender hitting the tire. Right now, they're beating on the right front corner, trying to get that fender out. They want to make sure that there's no contact with the tire. There is now, however, a hole in that fender area. That's not going to help him at higher speed. Right side tires are on. They're going to change the left side tires. Tough break for Jeff Gordon back there in the traffic, and he just got into it. The race off pit road is won by Marlin, then Earnhardt Jr., Sadler, and Harvick. Being a lap down wasn't so bad, was it? Not for those fellows, but a melee in the back stretch. Again, Dave Blaney involved, Tony Stewart, Jimmy Spencer, Kenny Schrader, Kurt Busch, and I believe Ward Burton. Let's see what happened coming off turn two. There's Tony all by himself. Going low. Oh, oh, Buckshot got in. Buckshot got in trouble. He was sideways off turn two, got loose, and Tony Stewart just came up on him so fast, nowhere to go. There's there where Jeff Gordon. Gordon got the damage. Sterling Marlin gets through, and Bill Elliott gets through. Oh, and there's my the oh, goodness. Spencer, Spencer just pile drove Stewart's car. There you see Ward Burton get caught up in it, and a host of cars on the outside. another view you just see buckshot jones in the 44 there was sideways. so much smoke that uh, spencer and those guys just could not see there's so, all the smoke out there so what these guys are coming here and they can't see you're coming out of the smoke it's like coming out of a bank of fog wow what a hit oh my goodness and at that speed daryl from 300 feet away what can you do well there's nothing you're at the just the mercy of the track either opening up and you slip watch through front of you there watch in front of you there Come on, come on, go on. Back to the caution. Go back to the caution. Come on. 44 is the leader. Watch the 9 outside. Tony Stewart, it's reported, is out of his car. Well, the good news is all that impact was on the right side. Yes. Uh, that wasn't in the driver's side. You can see there on the right side. I'm sure he's shaken up quite a lot. They're stabilizing him there with uh, stuff around his neck. And our folks report that Tony Stewart was moving when they put him on the stretcher. And uh, we're hoping this is precautionary. And it, it's, it's pretty standard anytime a driver has to be helped from his car, get him stabilized, get him on that stretcher into the infield care center. Turn two is a tough turnover, boys. I, you just, I, don't, I can't tell you how many times today we've said they're going. They're, they're, we've seen wrecks over there that didn't happen, but they should have happened. So here's Gordon back in. You, you saw and heard just that little thump as Jeff Gordon swerved to avoid Tony Stewart and just barely caught him with the right front of his car. Jimmy Spencer's car towed to the garage area. Both ends a mess. I mean, of the seven cars, six or seven cars that was running behind Tony Stewart that was on the lead lap, the only car that received no damage of that group was Sterling Marlin, the 40 car. And you rode with him as he drove through that, and it was only close. by luck of the Irish, you were in a complete tire smoke fog. Well, and think about this, back to Charlotte last year when Gordon got bumped in the right front leaving the pit lane and messed up his right front fender, Larry, and he was uh, later, uh, no time at all, he got lapped. So that's a uh, very critical corner of the car here and they get it got to get it fixed right there are the 11 cars that received some or more damage in that crash Johnny Benson sitting in hoping they can make repairs and get him back out Mark Martin's car got a lot of damage as Tony Stewart goes into the ambulance for the trip to the care center let's ride with Mark Martin Slow down, slow down, 
Couldn't see a thing. Check up. Johnny Stay Benson. High. You got one right in the racetrack high. Wrecking real bad, can't tell. Hey, the spotters, you know, I can't tell. I can't tell you what to do. Now watch when Stewart gets sideways and the track just closes up. What a tangled mess. Under caution for an 11 car pile up on the back straight away at Darlington. 11 cars in this crash on the back straight away. Mark Mark waiting on repairs. Uh, as far as we know, Tony Stewart, the only one of those 11 who did not drive or walk away. He was helped onto a stretcher and taken to the infield care center. We'll update you as soon as information is available. Well, on that, Tony's condition. That 20 car, I mean, the right front tire is all the way up under the dash, Larry. Let's take a look and show you from Fox Tracks the speed of Tony Stewart as he came around turn two and ran up against Buckshot Jones. Boy, Once Jimmy Spencer piles into Tony, the track becomes blocked. There's nowhere for these guys to go. Drivers who were among the race leaders, few made it through. Yeah, only two cars, the 24 and the 40, but let me tell you, as a driver, hit that outside wall and then bounce back out there and you're sitting in the racetrack like that, you are, I'm telling you, you are pulling all them, pulling everything you got, you know you fix and take a hard lick. So here's where we are after pit stops. Marlon, the leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., one of those cars that got the free ride around behind the pace car, stayed on the lead lap. Earnhardt Jr.'s second, Elliott Sadler's third. Kevin Harvick, Ryan Newman, then Matt Kenseth, Jimmy Johnson, Rusty Wallace, and Bill Elliott, who snaked through there. Then Jeff Gordon, Jerry Nadeau, and Jeff Burton. Those would be the lead lap cars. And of those 12 cars, 10 of them was out there wanting a caution flag to get back around to get behind the leader. And I know we talk about the veterans, but we got a lot of young guys up there right now. And it's far from over. Caution out for an 11-car crash as Tony Stewart trying to lap Buckshot Jones. Trigger to melee. Mike moved a couple of our Coke family drivers back on the lead lap. Uh, Kevin Harvick and Jeff Burton there with Bill Elliott ninth. Ricky Rudd, Michael Waltrip, Kyle Petty, a lap down in the running order. Bobby Labonte, John Andretti, and Tony Stewart leading, taken out in that crash. Dale Jarrett, uh, oil pump, drive belt. Broke and Steve Park crashed like Stewart. Bad day to lead this race, Daryl. Boy, I know we saw the leader taken out, you know, early in the race. Park, Tony Stewart taken out in this situation. And you know what's going to be interesting? We got Rudd, Nemechek, Michael, and Kyle Petty, and Jeremy Mayfield, and Bobby Labonte one lap down that are going to restart on the inside again. All right, let's uh, go to Steve in the garage. Mike caught up with Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy, first of all, glad to see you're okay. Can you tell us what happened? That was a bad one. Yeah, it really was bad, you know. Uh, some lap car there just got loose or whatever and hit Tony, and we saw that, you know. And, uh, I mean, but it's all bottlenecked over there, and uh, I got hit really hard from behind and pushed into Tony really hard. But uh, we had a really good car today, awesome car, another top five run. I really felt like I had an opportunity to win. The thing would fly on new tires, and we made some adjustments to make it better, and we got it worse at one time, put it back to where we were, and we knew we had one more pit stop. And, you know, I'm very upset by it, but uh, at least nobody got hurt. Tony's going to be all right and uh, talking to him. So I'm, I'm glad that more that's more important than anything to me, uh, especially when I was the one that got pushed into him. But lap cars, you know, uh, everybody's a lap car. But sometimes you have to realize that you got to give way because the lap car ain't going to win this damn race. But the lap cars, you know, that's what they want to do. And uh, the idiots cost major pileup, take out three or four of the leaders. It's just not right. Let's go to Dick Berger. 
Jeff Gordon has told his crew that when he got into the accident, he simply could not see. There was so much smoke there. He has made five pit stops during which they put a piece of plastic like this on the right front nose to give him the proper aerodynamics. It is riveted in. It is also taped in by one of these foot-wide, actually several of these foot-wide pieces of tape. And just a few moments ago, Gordon, who is right now 12th on the speedway on the lead lap, told the crew it's one of the best cars he's ever had here at Darlington. They've loosened the car up a little bit because he's got some traffic to go through before he gets to the front. It's not pretty, but, well, we'll see if it'll work when they drop the green flag for the restart. A grinding crash, 11 cars in it, hard, hard hits. 10 of the 11 drivers walk away, and as Jimmy Spencer pointed out, the other, Tony Stewart, is going to be okay. All because of NASCAR safety implements. Jeff Hammond. That's right, Mike. I'm sitting inside our cutaway car, and as you can see, I'm pretty much capsulated inside here. New head restraints on both sides of me, so if I happen to hit the wall real hard or get hit by another car, my head will be over against these big, long, cushiony things. You might call it head restraints. Again, safety restraints. Nice, wide belts. Six-point harness a lot of times to keep the drivers pulled down. Really tight in these cars so they don't have any problems. As you can see, door bars here. Second to none as far as the workmanship right here to try to protect the drivers. That's why when Tony Stewart took a shot over in the right side, he was able to, you know, to withstand that shot, as well as the rest of the drivers that were involved. You don't think about just the guys who walked away, but in Tony's case, more than likely, these new safety restraints with these head, head deals, especially, as well as the Hans or the Hutchins device, probably min minimize his injuries today, and I bet you he'll be back in Bristol ready to go again. Thanks, Jeff. Mark Martin's returned to the race, minus a lot of sheet metal. Here's another look at it. Tony commits low as Buckshot Jones then comes right down the racetrack. Yeah, but what happened is Buckshot got loose, and then when he, when he tried to catch it, it just came down in front of Tony. And it was Schrader, Kenny Schrader, who got into the back of Jimmy Spencer, sending Spencer headlong into Tony Stewart. Let's go to Steve. Mike, we've caught up with Kenny Schrader, team hard at work on the front of this Pontiac, but there's not much left. Kenny, what happened? <laughs> Spotters set turn two, and uh, wow, that's where I'm at, you know, and uh, a lot of smoke. I couldn't see what happened. I saw on the TV that something, I guess, started with the 44 and the 20, just what I saw, but just a lot of smoke, and, you know, you go into it, and you just know it's a good chance you're not going to make it through, and then these guys kept running on another. Just heavy impact. Uh, well, it's just quick stops. You know, you weren't running that fast and stuff. You don't think you are, I guess. You're running faster than you think. And, uh, yeah, I was. I went over Tony, and he was a little groggy, but uh, looks like everybody'd be okay. Glad you're okay, Kenny. Thanks. Yeah, the reason I was felt uh, kind of sorry for Schrader was, you know, he was the first guy to car down in Daytona back last February, mm -hmm. and I just uh, I worried about him. So Sterling Marlin, the point leader, becomes the race leader. Sounds like a champion. He laid back smart. Yes, he did. Look, I couldn't see nothing. All of a sudden, smoke cleared, and there's that 20. Barely missed. That's a hell of a job, Sterling. Well, well, it's a great job. I mean, you got to be lucky as well as good. And on some days, you can be both. And I think that's what basically what Sterling Marlin was saying. You know, I couldn't see. I just happened to go to the right place at right. the right time. Must have a leprechaun on the ride-along pro program today. Tony Stewart is going to be airlifted uh, by helicopter to a local hospital to get him checked out. We have no report yet on any injuries. Uh, our hope is that this is precautionary. We have had two drivers tell us that that uh, they've talked to Stewart and he's going to be okay. Well, might get sight in here again, boys. Coming to another green flag. 53 laps to go. 12 cars on the lead lap. Marlon Stewart, or Marlon Earnhardt Jr., Sadler, Harvick, and Newman. One veteran and four young guns at the front, and one of them wants the lead. Inside, 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 clear behind him, clear low. He didn't waste no time taking that lead. No, I just think just a few minutes ago, he was a lap down. But, Darrell, you got to remember, and we know he was in clean air, and we talked about that, he pulled away from those leaders by 10 seconds. Well, he's in clean air again, and uh, he's going to be hard to chase down with 50-some laps to go. He's not going to have to pit again. So I think he's in pretty good shape right now. And Gordon back here got a great car, but he's got to go through 10 other cars to get to him. But Dale Earnhardt Jr. down on that apron, shoots that car back up the racetrack to the top of turn one and two. He's done that a lot today. 
when he's been running by himself. And Darrell, he didn't waste a lot of time or his car taking the lead. He just went right after it and got it. His car's been really good all day on new tires. Sterling's been really good on the longer runs. Elliot Sadler's been kind of right in the middle. So I wouldn't count him out either. But we saw what Elliot Sadler did there. It's a lot of things we've seen Spencer do a lot, try to get to the bottom. And as you say, you bob the car down. You just can't get the run up off the corner. You almost want to shift gears. You need to get it up in third gear, get a little power up off the corner. All these cars now are pit road lap 225. That's 68 laps to go. As far as any strategy, you just go to see a checkered flag. Or if we see another caution flag, you'll get four more tires. Yeah, don't be don't be hollering about tires because you're going to go to the finish on what you got. As I like to say, you've got what you got. You got what you got. Now work your hands and not your mouth. And do you think that's why Sterling Marlin did not put up a fight for the lead? I think Sterling knows his car well enough to know that it's going to come to him. And Dale Jr.'s is going to go away. And he's set right where he wants to. Let's go to the pits. Hey, DW, you're exactly right. We heard Tony Glover say on a short run, there's a lot of guys better than you, but after 10 or 12 laps, you are by far the best car on the racetrack, so be patient. Matt Yoakum. Well, Steve, an update from the hospital here. NASCAR officials Mike Zizzo has reported that Tony Stewart is complaining about pain in his lower back and lower leg area. He is going to be airlifted to Carolina's Medical Center in Florence for x-rays, but right now the prognosis looks good for Stewart. Thanks, Matt. You get knocked around like that inside the car. Your body goes through a lot of twists and turns. He's going to be sore, and hopefully he'll be fine. The bad news is he's got to run 500 miles at Bristol next weekend. Oh, boy. Isn't it 500 laps? It just feels like 500 miles? What did I say, 500 miles? Yeah. <laughs> it does feel like I'll 500 pass. miles. <laughs> You know, I've been watching the score monitor, and I think this says a lot for how good Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car is. Our monitor will tell us who ran the fastest lap when they ran it. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has run the fastest lap of his race just three laps ago, 29.97. Boy, that's faster than anybody. Nobody's been in the 29 since the race started. But those uh, young guys out front, <laughs> they can gas it up, especially if you put them with 100, less than 100 laps to go. The race pace has picked up. Eight drivers have just turned their fastest lap of the race. And I tell you, I think why that is, we were under 15 laps of caution. NASCAR blew the racetrack with the blowers. Got all the debris off of it, got all the rubber off of it. She's got a little more grip than she had before that caution. Yeah, and it's late in the day, and I'm sure our track temperatures have probably come down some, so uh, that's picked up the speed. Earnhardt Jr. quickest, Ryan Newman coming on. I just can't. I'm impressed with Ryan Newman. I was impressed with his qualifying run. I don't know how he made it through that run. And uh, today to get in that backup car, keep his calm, cool, collective. Here he is in the top five. And sitting second in points. Second in the points. Chasing a veteran. Pretty savvy little guy there. Pretty savvy race car driver. Now, Kevin Harvick was one of those who were caught on the tail end of the lead lap by the earlier crash at caution uh, by the uh, Kurt Busch spin and Brett Bodine crash. I mean, he started in 16th, and he's just one of those guys that picked the right spot to go through in that big cloud of smoke back on the backstretch. I've been watching Jeff Gordon in his car and again, just like before, Larry. It's just not that good in traffic. Now, once these cars get single file and spread out a little bit he might be all right but i don't think he's got enough time to chase down jr no he's back in 11th position seven and a half seconds behind dale earnhardt jr the only thing that'll help anybody and it's going to be a while happening is traffic and there's just not going to be that much now you see he's a little quicker than uh the junior that that number well now it goes back up again it was coming down he has a, gordon has a terrible time off turn two as far as too tight off that corner. I believe Sterling Marlin's car is coming to life here about 10 laps after this restart to the hey, outside. Look, look, smart, smart, smart racing. Everybody, everybody. Don't hold, we don't need to be held up here. Gordon's back there. They know that. That's a product of being worried about the guys back there back behind them. Let Sterling get in front. You follow him. He's faster than you are. I can't tell you how smart that is. That's so They're impressive when you see smart. somebody do stuff like that. Uh, don't race them now. Race them 40 laps from now. 43 to go as the track too tough to tame. Darlington. Welcome back to Darlington. Wonder what that fellow drove to the track today. <laughs> He's happy right now, I know that. 
Sterling Marlin in a dodge, leading Elliott Sadler's Ford. He's passed Dale Earnhardt Jr. for second place. So it's and, Dodge Ford Chevrolet. And, you know, I said that Dale Jr. was smart by letting Sterling go back. Folks, there's a strategy to everything that you do. The teams, the spotters, everybody's talking to the driver. You don't just go out there and hold people up and get yourself in trouble. There's a time to pull over and let somebody go, a time to follow them, a time to race. That's part of the, that's part of the whole deal. Here's that race for second place. And you see, Junior just pulled down. He, his spotter called him, his crew called him, said, look, 21's faster than you are, let him go. Just like he did for Sterling Marlin a few laps ago. And we beat on ourselves to beat ourselves to death here about racing the track. He's racing the track. Now there's Tony Stewart, who is going to be airlifted for x-rays. Again, which we hope are precautionary, as Matt reported. Young Guns. Maybe we talked too much about Young Guns last week. We thought today would be the day of the savvy veterans. But look who's up there in the top five. Four out of five. Sadler, Earnhardt Jr., Harvick, and Newman. And right behind Newman, Jimmy Johnson's almost. He only lacks a car length to be in the top five. Well, we don't want to forget about Rusty Wallace, who's in seventh place. Uh, you know, he's had an up and down day, but right now he's in the top five, uh, ten there. Having a great day, and his old heap's running pretty good. Rusty with two second place finishes here. Never won here. Oh, don't say that. It makes well, me mad. Never but yet. Has hasn't won yet here. Won yet. here. Right. That's it. There's Russell. He just tootling along. Kept his nose clean. His car not beat up. And it's Sadler. Whoa. Whoa. Sterling Marlin in. I think something happened to Sterling. Did he get a piece of the concrete? He may have. Let's see. We're all around. Back in your room. Car comes by. Uh, no really apparent damage. He got pretty close, Dick. Is, uh, Elliot Sadler has simply been reeling him in. We've been watching the scoring monitor and lap after lap after lap. This interval is getting smaller and smaller. And Elliot Sadler right now has got his eye on the leader. What a day this would be if this young kid could win here at Darlington this afternoon. And we were talking about Bristol next week, and who is the defending champion of that race next week? Mr. Elliot Sadler. You got it. So that working out he's been doing for the interviews, he might be able to get a few of them, Jeff. Well, <laughs> I, I hope you're right right there, D.W., because that's a fine young man right there, and he's right now up on top of that wheel, holding a pretty wheel as we watch him come through off that corner trying to run down Sterling Marlin. I don't mind if he outruns me today. Well, that 21 is no stranger to victory lane here. The Wood Brothers eight times have won at Darlington, and David Pearson, who carried that 21 to many of those wins, is the track's all-time winner with 10 victories. Clear. You saw Mark Martin, who returned to the Clear. racetrack. Ward Burton has also come back on track after that crash. Came in here third in points. Every lap is important when you're battling for that championship. 31 laps to go at Darlington on Fox. Fifth place is the race. Ryan Newman battling Jimmy Johnson, trying to hold Johnson off for fifth. <laughs> they, they've been battling for about 25 laps. Well, this is the rookie of the year battle as well, right here. And they got to use, you know, it's getting late in the day, and they got both of them in the top, uh, let's see, five here. Six, fifth, and six. They got to take care of their stuff and not wreck each other. That's the main thing. Daryl, eight of the top ten drivers right now have never won here. And pretty young, too. Here comes uh, Johnson down on the inside of Ryan Newman down here. <laughs> never thought Dale Earnhardt Jr. We could say he's older than four of these guys, 27 yeah. years old. The Wood Brothers have eight victories here. Cale Yarborough gave them their first back in 1968. David Pearson won six times. And Neil Bonnet, the Southern 500, 1981. The last, uh, most recent win here for Glenn and Leonard Wood. Here's Dick. Leonard Wood, one of the original members of the Wood Brothers, first came to this racetrack in 1953. Now age 67, guess who was underneath the hood of the race car this morning setting up the carburetor on Elliott Sadler's car? Leonard Wood nervously watching his car running in second spot. Oh, what, what a shame. Uh, Jerry Nader in the 25 car, one of the lucky guys, got that back on the lead lap a while ago. It, he's had a really not a good year. His best finish, 15th at Las Vegas. He was running 10th, and here he comes to pit road with about 20-something laps to go. Dave Blaney back in the race and in the pits, back in the race after that crash. Let's go back down to Dick. 
Well, Jeff Horton has called into his pit crew and said he thinks he has a tire going down in that number 24 car. Luck is fleeting, especially at this place. Yeah, I mean, if Gordon sets there, leads the race uncontested, gets in trouble off a of turn two, no fault of his own, and now his day's gone down to two. But you know, his real turning point was not of his making, Darrell. Oh, yeah. He had came to pit road for four tires, routine pit stop. Kurt Busch, we think, misses pit road, brings the caution out, puts him back in the field. Now look at him here. Yeah. Well, it's been a bad day to be the leader. Steve Hart led the race, ran over a lapped car. Jeff Gordon got caught up when Tony Stewart, leading the race, ran over a lapped car. It's been a bad day to be the leader. Hey, he's got a, I'm telling you, got a pretty good old heap here. He's Rusty Wallace. He keeps closing in on that uh, 48 and 12 up in front of him there. Well, as long as those guys run side by side, which that's what you're supposed to do with 20-something laps to go. You don't let anybody have anything. Rusty will continue to reel them in. He made some adjustments early in the race, got him way behind. I thought he really got himself in trouble, but he's dug himself out of the hole, and here he is running in the seventh spot. For the first time since Daytona, all three <laughs> of NASCAR's premier divisions in action at the same track on the same weekend. Let's give you a little bit of update. As yesterday, Jeff Burton led flag to flag in the Bush race. You saw on FX, Jason Keller picked up the point lead by 12 over Greg Biffle after four races. And in the Craftsman Truck Series, Sears presents the points. Ted Musgrave and Robert Presley with identical finishes in the two races are tied for the lead. Sterling Marlin out front of Elliott Sadler now by one and a half seconds with 19 laps to go. Welcome back to Darlington. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds and Daryl Waltrip. We're closing in. We're 15 laps to go. Marlin, Sadler, and Earnhardt. Kevin Harvick, the first four, but the big battle on the racetrack has been for fifth place. <laughs> Ryan Newman has been trying to hold off Jimmy Johnson and Newman's teammate, Rusty Wallace. Oh, they, and Jeff Hammond, Rusty, he's, he's got a little bit of score to settle, but not necessarily with these two guys. That's exactly right, Mike. Today I was talking to Bill Wilburn, who is Rusty's crew chief, and Bill has got a sprint car that Johnny Herrera drives for him on the World of Outlaw circuit. Well, last night at the Devil's Bowl, Johnny finished fifth, so he went to Rusty and said, hey, you got to do better than my sprint car did, and Rusty said, no problem, I'm going to run fifth or better today, and you can bet on that. It's just a friendly bet, strictly for pride, and it looks like Rusty's trying to hold his end up. Still there. He's faster than these guys. He got caught up a couple of times here in traffic. I think he's got Jimmy this time. Oh, no, see, that's a rookie now. See how a rookie outside. races on the outside into that corner? That was not a smart thing to do. I, I, they made it, and I know, yep. well, they're racing for the, you know, it's the end of the day, but you got to be really careful doing that. But You'll you take know, both cars out. If Rusty wasn't a veteran that he is, exactly. it would have already happened. Rusty probably anticipated that happening. Now, Rusty's probably calling his spotter and saying, hey, tell that guy I'm better than he is and get out of my way. Of all the cars that was in that big wreck, uh, the only three that are in the garage area that will not be back out, of course, Tony Stewart, Jimmy Spencer, Kenny Schrader came back out and completed one lap. What that did, that moved him up two positions in front of Tony Stewart and Jimmy Spencer. Then he went back to the garage area, gained those two positions by running one lap. And that's six points at the end of the season. That could be meaningful. Yes, it could. Elliot Sadler is 2.7 seconds off the lead, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. has now fallen six seconds back. Earnhardt is under pressure from Kevin Harvick for that third position. And you got it. That's really impressive with Harvick, too, uh, Larry, because Harvick was not even in a contention all day long until he got back on the lead lap after that wreck. No, I mean, those guys, they were struggling in practice yesterday. They've just kind of been just so-so ever since they unloaded here on Friday morning. But again, he got back on the lead lap after that big wreck and uh, was in position. Yeah, he, he, he needs a good run because he's really been struggling. And that team's kind of down. They haven't lived up to their expectations this year yet. Not at all. Ten to go. And let me tell you, there ain't a guy out there and ain't saying, boy, I'll be glad when this is over with. And Harvick is about a tenth of a lap faster than Dale Earnhardt Jr. He runs up on it, especially off the corner, right here on the straightaway. Dale Earnhardt Jr. pulls him a little bit. Hard to make the passes here. You got to have the whole racetrack or else you take a chance. And you don't want to take a chance this late in the race. 
And this is going to be a full run on this set of tires right here. They were on pit road at lap 225. That's 60-something laps besides the caution laps they ran. So, I mean, this is one of the longest runs that they've had all day on their tire. And the key for Sterling Marlin is on that last restart, he didn't race Dale Earnhardt Jr. He let him go, saved his car, and put himself in a position to win. He didn't save his tires, he just didn't abuse them. Didn't abuse them. <laughs> All right. He had that knowledge. He's got experience, but he's also got knowledge. That's all that stuff you write down all the time, Larry. There you go. The book of wisdom. <laughs> now, if you can just get somebody to use it and listen to you, you'll be okay. Like uh, my crew chief already boy, you've got to believe what I'm trying to tell you. Sadler is three seconds back. Junior is six seconds back with Harvick. Ryan Newman is nine seconds back with Jimmy Johnson and Rusty Wallace. Then Matt Kenseth, 11 seconds back in eighth. Jeff Gordon is ninth. Bill Elliott, tenth. Jeff Burton, eleventh. That's a good, solid day for Bill Elliott. We talked about it earlier in the race, just have stayed out of trouble. Bill, who? <laughs> we, I told you when the end of the day came, he'd be in the top ten. He wouldn't have a scratch on his car. Ten years ago, he won this race, his fourth consecutive victory in the Junior Johnson number 11. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's pretty tough to be here for a while. You're getting out of Bill just what Bill can do. He runs the race. He runs all day. He stays out of trouble. Got to... It's a good finish. Third place. Uh, this isn't over. By no means, with six laps to go. Earnhardt Jr. and Harvick. And they have enough cushion on Ryan Newman back in fifth in the 12 car. They can uh, they clear. can get up here and go after it a little bit. Harvick pulls right up on the rear bumper. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Harvick's been beating him, getting down in the corner right there, down to the bottom side. Now, can it, will it stick? No. But here's the thing. Remember how Junior pulled over and let the 40 and the 21? Oh, oh. 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 there. Clear, all clear, all clear. I don't think he was just waving to it. No, he wasn't. That's cooling off that glove because it was smoke. Yes. So I ain't pulling over for you there, bud. You're going to have to get by me. Man, what a battle between these two guys. Well, they're having fun. Now, believe it or not, these two guys are probably having fun. Oh, he, he did it. He pulled over, Darrell. He's pretty body. smart. Clear. He doesn't have enough That's on the front stretch. Close as fast as your mirror. Well, you talk about double dipping. Right they double dipped all the way through turn four here. <laughs> you want that spot that bad? You just what? go ahead. And, yeah. I'll deal with you later. <laughs> hey, what hey. are you thinking? Man, is the race about over with? I'm sliding around you all over the top of me. If third's that important to you, just have at it. <laughs> I think Junior's just trying to hang on, you know, right here to get yeah. to the finish. He's three and a half more laps. We'll get up a good nice top three or four. Top four. Yeah, he's, he's got a big handful right there. He's going to have a hard time holding off to the trail car because he is closing in a hurry. Four feet up here again. Sterling Marlin, all those Carolina Dodge dealers who've named this race are breathing a little easier with him out front by three and a half seconds with three to go. There's a lot of lap traffic up there. That kind of lead, you just need to pick and choose where you go by these guys. Yeah, he's under no pressure. I mean, he can just about coast in from here. I know he's just soon not to run up on anybody else. He's just soon to follow him. And uh, I don't think you'd have to, anything to worry about. They're all around two to go. And here comes Newman. Yeah, he's closing in a hurry. Here comes the 48 and the two boats. So Junior's going to have his hands full here with the last couple laps. I think he's done made those tires mad. Yeah, he's done ticked those tires off, and he can't, he's in no position to hold anybody up. That has a whole lot to do with it. You know your car's not good enough to outrun somebody. You get run over from behind, get spun out, and, and, kept, and cost yourself a good finish. Boy, what a season this guy's having. I mean, four wow. top tens, leading the points. We're all around, no pressure. He's consistent every week. Chael last night. Material. And look, wasn't afraid to change the motor and go to the rear. Wasn't it worth worrying? A lot of guys say, well, we're doomed. And wasn't afraid to let people pass it. So I'll race you when the time comes. Two guys that went to the rear, our first and second point men. Where are they now? Right up there. Yeah, first and fifth. Get back to line. Got no pressure. Sterling Marlin will get his eighth consecutive top ten finish, his tenth Winston Cup career win, and his second win of 2002. Marlin wins the Carolina Dodge Dealers 400. <laughs> Elliott Sadler second. Harvick third, and for fourth, Earnhardt Jr. holds off. Ryan Newman.
Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, and Rusty Wallace. And a fast pose in Matt Kenseth. Jeff Gordon ends up ninth, Bill Elliott tenth. Chip Ganassi, car, car owner. Second Darlington win for Sterling in 37 starts here. He won this race in 1995. Now, though he started Marquee last sponsors, in a backup and your car, in the, in the, in the they'll be credited with in. starting 11. That's requalified for this race. Steve Burns. Thanks, Mike. You, did a Lee, great job. Lee, you guys did that one the hard way. Have to drop all the way to the rear of the field. How does it feel? Man, it feels great. Uh, I tell you what, got the best driver out there, got the best crew, got best sponsors, uh, best car owners. Um, you know, to come from dead last and uh, to, to win here today is uh, certainly a, to contribute to uh, how strong our race team is. And and certainly Sterling, uh, just just an awesome guy. And uh, just so proud of this race team. And I like to thank Coors and uh, Dodge. Uh, Coors Light, I love it, man. We. Uh, Again, we had a great car, and uh, we were really good again on long runs. We weren't good, ne you know, never good on the short runs. Uh, took our car about 15, 20 laps to come in, and and you got to race this old racetrack, just like I said earlier. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it uh, come up and bit a few people, but uh, that's what we had to do is race this old racetrack today. Let's go to victory lane, Lee. Thank you, bud. for Sterling Marlin and he extends his point and you know I'm really proud I'm happy for Sterling to get the opportunity to show just how good a race car driver he is Sterling is all he has probably the most experience of anybody in the garage area right now and he's been with a lot of teams but this one is the right one for him the right combination they doing all the right things Tony Glover's there with him they get you know they've worked well together in the past Lee McCall doing a great job working on the car <laughs> All that stuff he got a, a headrest in there. Hey, makes it a little difficult to get out sometimes. It's becoming a familiar sight. Sterling Marlin in victory lane with Dick Bergeron. Atta boy, Sterling Marlin. What a great job. They, you know, they talk about how tough this racetrack is, and we're looking at all the bed up race cars. How'd you get through all that stuff from the back of the pack and wind up here? <laughs> a great race team. I mean, uh, Chilton Felix has sent a great race team, and all the guys at the shop and here, and uh, they're just a great bunch of guys. And uh, I was real lucky, you know, uh, when they wrecked off uh, two over there, I almost hit Tony and uh, got through it. Hope everybody's okay. I know they had to cut Tony out, I guess. Hope he's okay. And two or three got shook up. Hope my teammates okay. And uh, like thank Coors Light, Dodge, Target, Goodyear. All these guys, it's great. You're looking at all the decals. Hey, you've been with some pretty terrific teams before, but this is something that has never happened in your career, running up front week after week after week. Why? I tell you, it just feel, feels good. Uh, this team's got a lot of determination, and uh, we're going to race every race, try to win it, and uh, try to win this championship. I mean, I'm, I'm 40, 44, and uh, it's the best team I've ever been with, and uh, they got me some great race cars. This is one we won uh, Vegas with, and got a couple more like it coming up, so... We're ready for him, I think. Were you thinking motor at all today? No, uh, Ernie didn't do a great job, and, you know, they we had to go to the back start the race. They seen a lifter. It didn't look just right, and, uh, you know, watch chance? We're leading the points, and uh, it's kind of tough to pass here. It's a place you get in trouble pretty quick if you don't watch it, but, uh, you know, had a good car. Just took her time coming through the pack, and uh, things worked out. Having the best ride of his entire life. Sterling Marlin, winner this afternoon at Darlington. Mike? Sterling Marlin has tamed... The Lady in Black. Welcome to our Carolina Dodge Dealers post-race show here at Darlington. Sterling Marlin is your winner. Elliot Sadler, Kevin Harvick. And with Elliot Sadler, our runner-up, Steve Burns. And with Elliot Sadler. Get in here. That was a great run. You need to tell us about it. Yeah, that was pretty cool right there. I mean, we, to run up front all day like that, get a lap down, the guys not uh, give up on me. Great pit stops all day. Uh, this motor crowd four to us is pretty good. Um, the owner made a decision Thursday morning before we left to come here. We switched cars. This was not the car we were going to bring, uh, but those guys decided to bring it here, and it paid off. Great finish. All right, great run, Elliot. Let's go to Matt. Well, Junior, back when you made your first start here, when you completed that race, I said, how do you sum it up? And you said it was like you and about 10 cartons of TNT Dynamite. How about today? It's a little bit better. Um, we came here, rolled off the trailer real comfortable. Steve Park tested here, and we used a lot of his stuff. And Use some, some of Michael's shocks from his practice yesterday, and the car seemed to be real good. Uh, just not quite as good, you know, as the 40 and the 21, them guys, but we 
to get out of here with a top five is first one we've ever had, so I'm real happy. You know, real excited. Good for our point situation. Maybe a bump us up, 10th or so. No, I never knew you drove a limo on an ice rink before. Yeah, that's kind of what it's like. <laughs> it's kind of like driving a Zamboni, but uh, it, it, it gets old. But uh, on new tires, it's a lot of fun. But uh, driving around, sliding around, man, it makes for a hard day's work. We definitely put it in today. Second straight top five finish for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Steve? Well, thanks, Matt. Caught up with Ryan Newman. Ryan, you guys did it the hard way again. You had to go to the rear, had a great qualifying run. Tell us about your day. Well, we, you know, like you said, we had a great qualifying run on Friday, but uh, I think we let, cut a left rear tire down in practice, and I got loose and got up and got in the wall, and I had to go to the backup car for the for race day here. And you know, it just says a lot about the team to bring a brand new race car right off the truck. Uh, no, no time on the racetrack at all. This is the first lap. This car's turn today was the first lap of the race, and uh, you know the pit stops were awesome. Just a great day for us in the Altel Ford, and uh, you know there's uh, a lot of good things we can bring about uh, bring out of this. Great job, Brian. Let's go back to Matt. Well, Steve, coming in today, Kevin Harvick averaged a 30th place finish, and how about today? The old lady in black, you didn't do too bad. No, we we, uh, we struggled a little bit at the beginning, but we kept ourselves on a lead lap, and then uh, about the third or fourth stop, uh, car came on, we got ourselves solidly in the top ten, and um, got caught under the pits, uh, under the green in the pits there, and luckily that was a, a good thing it looked like, so uh, uh, we gained a couple spots off of that wreck, but I think we had a, you know, a top seven or eight car, and we needed this for these Goodwin uh, guys and everybody on this team. We'll see you next week at Bristol to Dick Bergeron. With Chip Ganassi, he has just waded through the entire crew, shaking hands with just about everybody on the way. Mr. Everything You Touch in Auto Racing winds up in Victory Lane. What is your magic touch? My magic touch is I, I'm, 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 I'm fortunate to run into some great people. And whether it starts down here with Felix Sabatis or, uh, you know, Andy Graves and Tony Glover and Sterling and Ernie Elliott and just the whole gang, I, I'm... I, I'm lucky that I run into good people. That's what it is. This guy doesn't matter. Indy cars, Winston Cup cars, he wins in all of them. Sterling Marlin, second time this year as a winner, celebrating there with the Dodge dealers in Victory Lane. Elliott Sadler gets his second, second place finish of the year, finishes second today, total 500 and second here today. Yeah, and you don't want to come to Darlington unless you got your work clothes on. <laughs> right. That's what you have. That's a day's work, just like Dale Jr. said. You Bill know, Elliott dodged the big wreck there, ends up in the top ten. We asked Sterling Marlin about was he worried about the motor. I, I, he wasn't worried about the motor. I'm sure what he was worried about was getting to the front without having a problem. The attrition was high. Nine drivers failed to finish. Ended up in the garage. That will turn some of the top ten of the points topsy-turvy with Tony Stewart, who came in here fifth in the standings, being one of those. Not a good day to be leading the race. Mm, no. Except for right. lead. <laughs> Except at the end. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Pole sitter Ricky Craven finishes 41st. Looked like he had a car that was going to be up there contending for the win. And how about those rookies finishing fifth and sixth? Let's go back downstairs to Steve. And we've caught up with one of them, Jimmy Johnson. Boy, look at the leaderboard. You come here, finish sixth. The cool thing is if you walk around this race car, there isn't a stripe or any dents or anything on it. So the guys in the fab shop, uh, there's no work from my side. So just honestly, this is probably the highlight of my career to come here and, and be this competitive at Darlington. We got caught down uh, a lap in the pits when the caution came out and then, you know, had the big wreck on the back stretch where we were able to get back caught up. And this, this is awesome. Uh, all the support from Hendrick Motorsports, everyone at home watching, all the departments and all the support from the Lowe's employee owners. Uh, we're having a blast. This is cool. And I can tell. Congratulations. <laughs> let's go to Chris. All right. Thank you very much. So let's uh, have a look at the uh, point standings. Sterling Marlin, who came in as the leader, fattens that lead, but Ryan Newman trying to hang with him. And Rusty Wallace, who has never won here in Darlington, with a strong finish to move up to fourth. And you see the rookie, uh, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, sixth with Jeff Hammett here in the Hollywood Hotel. It was not a good day. This was really a, a theater uh, for the bazaar with some of the different storylines we had working and some of the crashes we had from Steve Park's mm -hmm. return, Jeff Gordon trying to snap out of his slump, certainly Tony Stewart trying to win back-to-back -back races. Sterling Marlin ends up winning it. Let's go early. Steve Park had the lead and led uh, on lap 38 until this wreck took place. Yes, right there. He's trying to get under Stacy Compton, a lap car, and as a lot of the drivers said, it, it felt like that was very influential as far as him getting into him and then eventually wrecking, put him out of the race. And returning to racing to the scene that knocked him out six months ago, Steve Park was able to at least return in the, uh, in the race in his car. As for Tony Stewart, he had the lead. This is on lap 226. And Buckshot Jones slowing down, causing Stewart to wreck. And then with the smoke, obviously a number of cars. You see Jeff Gordon sneaking by, Sterling Marlin 
but then the uh, Chip Ganassi car with uh, uh, Jimmy Spencer actually being pushed from Ken Schrader and running into him. Yeah, all that smoke right there, Chris. And everybody keeps talking about lap traffic. Lap traffic and these racetrack in particular is so slick off of turn two. We saw Buckshot Jones. He got loose. The 20 car of Tony Stewart came in there, didn't have a place to go. They collected each other up, and next thing you know, we had a massive crash over and we're very lucky that uh, Tony Stewart wasn't more injured than what he was. Hey, Eleven cars involved, and because of the, some of the safety improvements from the Hans or the Hutchins device or uh, some of the other uh, safety devices in the car, uh, everyone walked away except Tony Stewart. He was taken the official release here to Carolina's hospital system in Florence uh, by air, Florence, South Carolina. He was conscious and alert, complaining of pain in his lower back. He was also uh, complaining uh, some, uh, of numbness and tingling in his left foot. As you get a look at uh, Victory Lane and uh, Sterling Marlin and his gang, but uh, Tony Stewart will undergo a, a CAT scan of the head, back, and abdomen, uh, but some of the other drivers did speak with him and said he was in good spirits and appears to have gotten out of that in uh, terrific shape when you consider the wreck. And the key, that pileup, really, is we saw the cars going through Jeff Hammond, Sterling Marlin, one of those, to get through without any serious damage right. to his car, and then he was able to uh, maintain that lead later. And we were able to hear him over the air calling Tony Glover and, and, and Lee McCall, letting them know, man, I'm coming through the smoke, and all of a sudden I turned, and he saw there was Tony Stewart. He made the right decision. He cut it underneath Tony Stewart, avoided that accident right there. And it had to be the key moment as far as his victory is concerned. Then his knowledge of the racetrack and experience came together. He was able to maintain a certain pace, didn't get excited with Earnhardt when he took the lead from him, got it back, and drove to victory. Sterling Marlin, a captain uh, on his uh, high school team as a quarterback and linebacker when he played football, so used to surviving pileups, and he got through that one, this time in a car, to win the race here in Darlington tonight. Elliot Sadler finishing second, Kevin Harvick third, UPS, the official delivery company of NASCAR, delivers a chance to win four tickets to the 2003 Daytona 500 on Fox by logging on to foxsports.com, keyword UPS Racing. Quickly, Jeff Pam and a couple of other storylines, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the rookies, Ryan Newman, and Jimmy Johnson finishing fifth and sixth. You really can't say enough about it. There was a perfect example of how Ryan Newman is showing he's got a lot of support. I think the Penske group is very calm, came to the back of the pack, stayed second points after a tough race. And the drought for Jeff Gordon continues. 13 straight races finishing out of the top five. And again, his last victory came last September in Kansas. But the 11 car crash up the key as Sterling Marlin made it through and all the way to victory lane. A number of other drivers surviving well. Once again, the track that has the nickname Too Tough to Tame took its toll on the best drivers in the world. Steve Park did return to racing. Jeff Gordon did lose the most laps. Tony Stewart did have the lead. But after the 11 car pileup, Sterling Marlin survived to win. Happy St. Patrick's Day. We'll see you next week in Bristol, Connecticut. For all of us, I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for watching NASCAR on Fox. Hey, everybody. Let's see.